I hope you're enjoying your Saturday evening. Um, we're going to build the lunar lander this evening, and I have special guest Lego Lomaniac, and he's looking at Vega. Is she there, young Vega? Oh, uh, Vega, she uh, she is off to the side. Uh, you can see her slightly there now, uh, a brown fuzzy patch <laughs> over here. Brown fuzzy patch. Well, that'll do. We'll have to make do with that, won't we? You'll see if she goes to bed at some point. They'll yeah. Put the camera on her. So we've got uh, one or two people in the chat. Miss Brick, Robin Hull, hello. Legomaniac, for obvious reasons. I'm oh, sorry, Mock Brick, not Miss Brick. Um, my glasses don't read too well from over there, so sorry about that. <laughs> this is why I will I'm be your, maniac here to to be my my eyes and uh, read the chat when I'm busy building. What's that called again? Like a oh wait, let's see what do we have here now. There we go. Hey, yes. Do not see the Vega camel turn off. <laughs> Maybe we should just have meow noises going when she sat there so that we, we've always got it in shot. What do you think? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's the cat that enjoys live streams. Excellent. So to reiterate for those that just joined me, us, this is what I'm building today in honor of the 50 year anniversary of the moon landing. I, um, I bought this one a few weeks ago now, and uh, I've been itching to build it ever since, but I thought, no, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to do it live on a live stream. So I've, um, <clears throat> unusually for me, I've emptied the box and kept it in quite a nice pristine whoop, fashion. I do normally throw boxes away, but I think, I have, I think I'm going to keep this one because it's a particularly nice box. Find somewhere for it. And uh, in order to avoid lots of rustling noises with the bags, I've... Um, it's not going to stay there, probably. Um, I've got all the parts organised into trays with numbers, so hopefully we won't go wrong. But uh, we shall see how we go. And what's Mister Mister Maniac doing this evening? All right, so um, I don't have any proper like um, uh, real space sets uh, available for building or anything, but I have prepared some of my. Uh, classic vintage uh, Lego classic space sets just for showing and we will be dismantling this uh, uh, this Rexelsior because it's too big to have anywhere. The Lego fist. The Lego fist. It shoots and is crazy and uh, awesome build uh, and fantastic interior but it needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, it should only take about an hour to dismantle and after that I'm not sure what I will be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Looking but up we'll the clearly. So yeah. I'm going to start here because otherwise we'll be here for hours. Right. Let's see. Drag Dragon Chick is here. Hello. Uh, Mockbrick. Well, I haven't. You said hello to some, but I haven't said hello to anyone. Uh, Mockbrick says he liked the huge vintage set in the middle. Uh, do you mean this uh, this one here? Yeah, I like this particularly as well as it's it's actually a. Uh, it's from 1985, and it's a um, exclusive to a German toy store at that point. So I'm very lucky to actually have it at all. Cool. So we built an astronaut. That's a good place to start. And uh, they can sit down there with the sig figs. I have to re restrain myself from commenting on the stuff you show, or else it switches to my camera and it, people won't see what you're showing. <laughs> well, I can give you a minute or so at the end of each show if you like to, to do some tell. <laughs> How's that? Galgate is here. Ingrid Wynn is here. Hello. Uh, Little Maniac, the chat holiday. reader. Is Galgate calling in from holiday somewhere? Is she on holiday? <laughs> Are you on holiday, Galagate? What are you doing? Uh, biggest classic spaceship. Um, Robin Hull is currently building Capricorn One. Ooh. Is that an official set? I'm not sure what the Capricorn One is. Uh, Tell us, Robin, spill the beans. Capricorn One. I know the Discovery One is the spaceship from Space Odyssey. 
Uh, but it's probably not that one. I'm trying to remember. I do know the name, but I can't think what it's from. Galgate says that didn't stay built very long, like Lemaniac. Well, no, I needed something space related to dismantle, and this is one of the few I had. I actually have the Super Star Destroyer to dismantle as well. I could dismantle that one. Uh, I haven't actually built that in a time lapse yet. That's actually not true. I've built it twice in a time lapse, but none of those those are old footages from like five years ago, and they they're not really good. And it's stayed together for that long as well. Up to, not up to your modern production standards, is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Mostly the uh, the image keeps flickering because at that point I didn't take into account uh, the frequency of uh, the lamps. Uh, yes. You don't see it when you just look at the uh, the footage normally, but when you speed it up, it's very, very uh, <laughs> there. Yeah, when I went to Lego House, I did some video footage, um, which I still haven't got around to sorting out properly. Um, and the problem there was the fact that a lot of the time I brought it back and had a look on my computer, and they got fluorescent lights everywhere, and the flickering was horrendous. All right, yeah. And I, you know, well, the sort of stripy bands going across, you know. Yeah. Um, that's exactly yeah. what's happened in mine. Yeah, and and it, I just looked at it. I thought, oh, I don't think I can use that. So that's why it hasn't made seen the light of day yet. I've got lots and lots of still photographs which I sh could put into a montage, but that requires a lot of processing on my part. So I haven't actually got around to that yet either. <laughs> I'm a very bad person. <laughs> Mockbrick says he meant the huge thing in the front. Yeah, this is not a classic space set. This is the Excelsior from the Lego Movie 2. It just came out this year, uh, a couple of months ago, actually. Or one, maybe one month ago. Yeah, it's very, very new. Actually, one thing I do have from Lego House, uh, I was there at the end of February, and they did. Um, they had a very interesting exhibition of all of the models from Lego Movie 2 and how they'd evolved into the final production model. So you see several, you know, four or five iterations of each thing, um, including the Excelsior and other stuff. And, and it's really amazing to see how things have changed from, from when they first said, let's build a Excelsior to actually how it turned out in the end. So it's re really interesting. And I really will get pull my finger out one of these days and, and sort that out for people because I think they would like to see that. That's really cool. I like how they actually built... Uh, actual Lego sets before I decided on how they should look in the the movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is precisely what they were building to to decide, make that decision. So it was um, really interesting exhibition. And again, I, I think I did some video of that, but I did an awful lot of still. So um, you know that that will be uh, useful to have a look at. Mm. Galgate is flying out for a vacation on Monday. Oh, okay, Monday. Robin Hull is watching from the moon. The moon, okay. Oh, so who watched the rocket launch earlier today? I was I on NASA's, NASA's YouTube channel watching at about half past four, five o'clock. Three more. I didn't uh, watch it, unfortunately, but I was setting up and yeah. doing other things. I've been following Apollo Lego reenactment, though. Yes, that's <laughs> fun, isn't it? On Twitter. Yeah. The latest saying, descent, orbit, insertion, burn. Colin saying, Eagle, Columbia, how's it going? Armstrong saying, Mike, the burn's complete. It was on time. Residuals are nulled and AGS is free. They're about to land very soon, yeah. 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 I think the uh, landing is about 9.20 p.m. UK time. So hopefully during the duration of this stream. And then they, they waited about six hours before they got out and had a wander. So... I'm hoping it'll be done by then. <laughs> oh, hopefully. At least your lunar land will be done so you can reenact the uh, yes. the, the uh, excursion. Very true. Say, um, Mock Brick has been building a curved road at the time with an illegal building technique. Yeah. Top Lego top. police will come and arrest you any moment. Yeah. Take all your Lego off you. They did make three space police themes, so <laughs> Lego space police. Uh, Capricorn one was it was a movie about the fictitious landing on Mars. The mission went wrong, and so it was filmed in a TV studio in the desert. Uh, all right. 
Yeah, I thought it was something like that. It, it ran a few bells. London Bridge Bricks is here. Good evening. Welcome to the stream. We're uh, Cass is building the lunar lander. I'm talking, so you don't see that properly. <laughs> I'll butt in from time to time. Don't worry. <laughs> so we're I'm going to unwind uh, or basically dismantle this uh, uh, Excelsior. I'm not in a rush at the moment because it just takes an hour and we'll be going probably more than an hour. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So I'm building the base plate up at the moment with lots of uh, plating, obviously. And uh, then there's the edging to do. I think it's the next bit. Short pause while I rummage in the parts bins. Um, now is, that a, is that your camcorder switching on for your recording of your unwinding? Oh, uh, yeah, you heard that, did you? <laughs> Just a little peek, but that's fine. I, I used to have my camcorder on silent, but until I figured out that it didn't then tell me in any way that it stopped recording because the memory card was full. <laughs> That's not helpful. That, is it? Yeah, that hurts hurt me a couple of times. So uh, in some sets, I needed to like build backwards uh, in order to recover and then film again because it stopped filming for ten minutes before I realized it. <laughs> that annoyed. That must annoy a great deal. Yeah, I think it happened in the. Beat, so I think it happened in the roller coaster. <laughs> Mockbreak knew that uh, this wasn't a Lego Classics, it was only a joke. He said, All right, yeah, uh, I, I had a feeling, but <laughs> the tone is not easy to convey in chat. Here we go, part of the oh, lunar surface coming together already. Nice, that's almost. Um, Almost oh, for uh, Micropolis box right there. You could uh, convert it. Yep, I could indeed. In uh, Ingrid Wynn had to go out so she couldn't watch the landing or the landing or the launch earlier. The launch. Yeah. Well, I expect it's there on replay if you want to have a look. I still find it a bit incredible that you can sit and watch these things live in your living room when, you know, terrestrial TV doesn't carry it. But <laughs> technology is good for that kind of thing. It's no profit in it for TV, you know. So no. screw them. Oh wait. Gallagher <laughs> <laughs> uh, is asking if you're planning to finish it all today. I think the answer is we'll see how we go. It'll be at least a couple of hours and I'll do. And then, then if we're fed up or people have decided to run away or whatever, then maybe I'll stop. But uh, we will see. Yeah. Uh, Doc Samson's is, Samson is here. Welcome to our stream. Hello, hello. Oh, the chat's fair flying right along. Here. Even though there's only yeah, there's some people. action. Only 10 people in there, but they're making their voices heard. The all important, uh, oh, oh, important Luna Lander thing there. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this fire, everyone? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually really disappointed with the um, this magazine part because it gets stuck. So every time you fire, you basically have to push it down further for the next round anyway. You have to manually keep feeding it, which is quite boring. Yeah, sounds annoying. I thought I wanted to remock it into a more working version, but uh, it didn't bother anyway. <laughs> haven't bothered yet, I think, with it, is isn't it? Yeah, I haven't bothered yet. It'll be next time I build it. So do you keep all of the sets that you take apart, or do you get rid of some of them? Currently, I have them all, but uh, it, even storage, uh, the, the basement is getting full of Lego. So um, something needs to be done. Maybe I'll start selling off my less liked sets, for example, mm -hmm. at some point. But I haven't bothered yet. Mm -hmm. It's not not pressing for me, but I could also recuperate some uh, some costs to buy more sets to make videos of. Yeah, and you could you could um, kind of uh, advertise them as as seen on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, could do something like that. 
surely uh, a selling point because people see that all the pieces are there. <laughs> uh, this uh, I'll advertise that these pieces were ch uh, chomped on by Vega. No, don't do that. <laughs> like um, with my uh, what was that? Was it these Santa's workshop, which had those uh, lights on a string? Oh yes, you love those, didn't you? Yeah. Tried to steal them from me. Doc Samson says he can't wait to see a big pile of blue bricks. <laughs> yes, you'll see the yes. glamour shot. The, the favourite bit of mine is the glamour shot right at the end when when you do your videos and uh, <laughs> there's a, just a big pile of rubble on your beautifully lit turntable. <laughs> yeah. I actually thought about doing that for the, the first one when I dismantled the Millennium Falcon, where I was like, ah, I'm not going to bother pouring all those pieces out onto the table. And then JC mentioned it, that I should do those, that I missed an opportunity. So now I yeah. sort of have to do them. Yeah. At least you're not going to do Lego rain. You go everywhere. <laughs> yeah. No, that was only for Ricky that one time. <laughs> London Bridge Bricks says it's a top set, Cass. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Have you built it already, London Bridge? Uh, hasn't he had some videos about it already? I think so. I don't remember. Um, As I say, I've LBB it, just watched the Masters before I kicked off the live stream too. Next time. Cass, I'll make sure I don't clash. All right, yeah, LBB is uh, doing their yeah. first live stream uh, in about 15 well, minutes. That was a bit unfortunate. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I've been meaning to put up my, um, uh, my what do you call it, event thing for several days and hadn't pulled my finger out and got around to it. So when you mentioned it on the Jacob's stream last night, I was like, oh, I've got to do that. Um, but honestly, if you, if you want to pop over and say hello to uh, Greg and Paul and support them, then that's absolutely fine. Um, do come back when they finish that. <laughs> now, just uh, pop over for two seconds and say hi uh, uh, that you came from here and then get people over here again. Yeah. Say that there's another stream going. <laughs> now, the woodshop teacher is here. Hello, how's it going? Hello. Uh, Greetings to you in Denmark. How are you? He said something, but it went away. So sorry about that. Thank you. It's very quick. That set really shoots a lot. It's a gun made of Lego. Says uh, says um, LBB. Yeah, it basically, is. it's um, it's basically a Nerf gun. <laughs> Yeah, I know one Cute stuff. Cute stuff. Com is here. Welcome. The Lunar Lander looks so cool. He says. Set the um, set the video up downstairs for any documentary stuff that might be on. But never mind. I shall catch it later. I know it's uh, very quaint and old-fashioned. Is you know setting a was well, actually a PVR. It's not a, not a real video tape recorder, but. Um, Yeah, LBB has made uh, a video on this set the day it came out. Right, cool. Cutestuff.com has the women of NASA set they need to build. Yeah, that's a oh, great yeah, set. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I have that as well. I have a video on it. It's my least popular video. Oh, dear. <laughs> I might have done some bad uh, SEO on it. How many cat foot minutes of cat footage is there? Probably none, as uh, the set takes like 10 minutes to build. That'll be it, then. There we go, the Probably. little surface is done. There we are. Oh, nice. With footprints ready-made. They, they can't be uh, <laughs> near Armstrong, surely, if they're already there and the land has not arrived yet. Hmm. <laughs> I know who made them. Must be something else going around on the moon. What do you Something think? they didn't tell us about. That's what made the footprints, look. It's Vega. <laughs> no, she gets sparkling. around. Isn't Was she left there by the traveler? Yeah, could be. He forgot her. No, she can't forget her. Come on. I, I see she's, she's working hard there. Oh, yeah. 
she is uh, inspecting. Well, she doesn't need to work very hard on that dismantling. No, this is true. <laughs> London um, Bridge Brick says, it's cool. Tonight is a trial for us. Thanks, Cass. Love your stuff. We can share. <laughs> sure. I'll say, I would, I'd be delighted to have you on the stream in future, but I'm still getting my my streaming food going, really, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing have, to have more than one guest, but I'm sure it'll happen in the future. That would be cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as soon as we, in the future, figure out how to have guests. Yes, indeed. And that, as I say, that's, um, that's you alluding to the fact that very soon, at the end of July, uh, Google Hangout, which is what most YouTubers use for doing multiple participant live streams, is actually coming to an end and Google's replacing it. We don't know what with yet because I don't think they've really said much. So everybody's kind of thinking, hmm, how's this going to work? Well, we could replace by something, but it might not be as good. Well, we never know. In the meantime, we will need to use some sort of third party yeah, exactly. software. So that's more, more stuff to download and clog up my computer. <laughs> <laughs> Jules Brick City is here. Hello. Thanks for joining. Hello. Very nice to have you here. Uh, Cutestuff.com asks, is that the Lego diner I see? It looks fabulous. Uh, what well, it is? Yes, it's the diner and the um, Parisian restaurant. This is part of, my, part of my little city called Blockville. Um, I must confess, I've been busy with my Ninjago expansion and haven't uh, got round to doing a, a city update for what it seems like months, actually. So I need to pull my finger out. The trouble is, it's all now massively dusty. So what I really, really need to do is just take it all apart and dust it thoroughly and then put it all back again. And that's a job that I keep thinking, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds tedious. Maybe you need like an air filter in the room. I just basically need not to shed any dust of my own, don't I really? <laughs> also, don't get a cat then. Well, no, I don't have a cat. It's just me shedding in here. Um, I didn't used to have long hair, but the, I've noticed since I've had longer hair that, that, that it's just gets everywhere. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Go back to a crew cut now. It was never quite that short, but um, the other thing I want to do is expand my. Um, theme park area because recently there's been some fantastic sets coming out. Uh, the UFO, 3 in 1 Creator UFO. Um, yeah, the Friends. Some really nice uh, Friends sets as well, surprisingly, with, with yeah. uh, some Very lovely cool. lovely um, carousels and stuff like that. In fact, let me grovel down here. The only thing currently in my pile of shame, apart from this, is the, the octopus ride here. Oh, yeah, that one's cool as well. Which I'm really looking forward to building. And I'd quite like to motorize them all as well, because I think that would be fantastic getting a bit more movement going. That's the plan. But as I say, it, it needs me to just go, okay, I'm going to do it now. I'll put a time lapse up so I can get some footage out of it. But um, no, it's, just, it's all a bit tedious and things will be chaotic for uh, yeah. quite some time. But I've learned oh. from other YouTubers that, that rarely does a city stay static and it's finished. People are always tearing things down and doing it again. So it's about time in the cycle that I had my turn, I think. Julian is calling me out in the comments. I'm behind on uh, comments. Oh, dear. <laughs> the woodshop teacher says uh, that all is fine in Denmark, getting ready to go on holiday to Sweden. Nice. What are you doing in Sweden, woodshop te teacher? The woodshop. I'm going to call you woodshop. Yeah. The last time I was in Sweden, was in 2003. So part of that sleigh ride thing you did? Yeah, I went with a very good friend of mine um, for a week of Arctic adventure, driving huskies. And uh, it was absolutely phenomenal holiday. We ate, we ate for England. I mean, the food that we got served was all cooked by our guide in the little mountain huts we were staying in. But we expended so much energy that despite eating ourselves silly, I came home and I'd lost four pounds. Because <laughs> like, I need more holidays right here. But it was, the dogs were just wonderful. And um, they were so um, dedicated and, and in the most part well behaved. There was a little bit of shenanigans went on. Um, I mean, I'm not really a doggy person. And you don't realise how much dog politics there is until you have a pack of dogs that you have to look after and uh, 
uh, Johnny, who was the, actually was Norwegian, but uh, that's an incidental thing really, um, he was our guide and uh, he knew all the dogs very well. So he, he put together a team for each of us between sort of like four and six dogs. Uh, who basically we drove our own sled around for a week. We had to carry all our own food. We had to carry the dog's food. Um, but Tommy knew each dog very, very well. And so he would say, well, when we pitch camp for the night, you can't possibly put this dog on a tether close enough to reach this dog because they won't like each other and there'll be trouble. So it was amazing. And they each got amazing characters and sort of personalities that you'd never think of. But, but by the time... Community. Yeah, by the time you'd spent a week with them, you knew what they were like. And, you know, one was a bit lazy and didn't really like to do things on his own initiative. But let's face it, when you're harnessed up with a team of five other dogs, if they start running, you don't have a lot of choice. <laughs> but, uh, Before I forget uh, or lose it, uh, London Bridge Bricks has a good question. How do you prefer this base plate to a uh, pre-printed one? How do I compare it? Well... or. Uh, I think uh, prefer, would, how do you prefer it? Yeah, it would have been lovely, wouldn't it? Because then all the spaces in, in the Lego community would have been going potty that they could now get Luna Bay plates again in, in new light grey and all the rest of it. And yeah, it would have been fabulous. But I can kind of understand why they didn't because it's a very specialised piece and it probably would have pushed the setup, part of the setup considerably. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's one of those. You know, it would have been great, but in all honesty, I can see why they didn't. So you would have preferred a uh, a printed base plate? Um, well, printed, no, no, but the you know one with the um the lunar crater thing, uh, injection mold. All right, yeah, one of those molded yeah. uh, base that, plates, right? That yeah. would have definitely bitten their hand off for. Right. Uh, Doc Samson mentions that isn't it duo replacing Hangouts? And yeah, I guess it is duo that replaces Hangouts, but we don't know what replaces or if we will get a replacement feature for Google ha Hangouts on air, the streaming uh, conference service we're using right now. Yeah, it's slightly different to the regular Google Hangouts. And uh, when you're doing a live stream from YouTube, there's a button that says start Google Hangouts on air. Um, and if you don't do that and try to use regular Hangouts, you can't then use that Hangout to broadcast. So it's all a bit weird. I only found this out the hard way a few days ago. So. Yeah. In fact, that 72-hour live stream was a bit of a pattern in the fire in many ways, but it was great fun. Um, and so I ran my own for an hour. I participated in your video. And I was on another couple as well later on in the weekend. Um, with uh, butt chop and brick, brick pasta, which was great fun. Yeah, crazy that was great. Dude. That was right before mine. Yeah, crazy, crazy dudes, but uh, you know, <laughs> lovely so with it. Fun, yeah. And then um, I was on one of Bricksmith's Pink Bucket Nation ones a bit later as well, and that was oh, really? really interesting in that I must confess, when I'm watching live streams um, and I don't know the characters very well necessarily, I find it's really hard to keep up when there's more than about three people. Yeah, some of them have eight people. I couldn't. Yeah, people will start talking up. over each other, and it just gets impossible to follow it. And the chat goes nuts, and all the rest of it. And I'm just like, I, I don't like this. I'm going to switch off. Literally, you know, my head just goes, no, nope, can't cope. Um, so it was interesting. There was about eight of us, I think, on that one. Um, and I was quite quiet for the sort of first half of it. And then I thought, well, if I don't say anything, the damn screen's never going to switch to me. So I, eventually I decided to just pipe up. And if somebody talked over me, I'd have said it again. And that seems to be how it works. So yeah. there we go. Woo! So oh, yeah. I'm at the end of bag one, very close, nearly. Got a sticker. Now, Ooh, this is a very sticker. special sticker sheet, folks. Look at that. So Thank shiny. You. Shiny, shiny, shiny. And I think what I'm going to do is when I've finished taking the stickers off that I'm going to use for the set, I'll keep the rest of it because actually there's some quite large areas in here. This bit here, for instance, oh. uh, it, it's sticker material, but it's not actually used for anything on this set. So if you want some mirror type stuff anywhere in a build in the future, uh, it'd be really good for that. So that's my plan. Yeah, that would be great. 
uh, used for mocks and such. Indeed. Um, what plant the American flag, which again should not really be flying before the boys have landed, but there we go. Yeah, oh yeah, they're talking about the Lego Masters USA that was announced. Oh yeah. Picked up by Fox. So I've got a brick built crater, which is That's rather cool. nice. These are for the landing feet. And a flag. To start on the lander soon. Yeah, flag with some footprint. And we're at the end of bag one. Woohoo. Nice. I shall hide the leftovers so I can do a guess the leftovers later. Uh, yeah, they can't watch Fox in the UK. Yep. <laughs> it's too bad, yeah. Um, it annoys yeah. me that I, I can subscribe to Lego Masters Australia on YouTube, but then I click through to one of their videos and it won't show it to me. So it's like, oh, right. Right, what's the point in letting me subscribe then? They want your money, but they don't want you to see. Exactly. You can subscribe and uh, you can watch it if you go to Australia. Yeah, it's a little bit far. I know I could do VPNs and all that stuff, but bruh. There's rumors that in January a white base plate is coming, says Mothbrick. White? White, white really? base plate. Really? What's that going to be used for? Which set is it coming in? You'd is think it like it a separate Something hoppy, perhaps. <laughs> Mark from the Lego room will be going, going no! <laughs> Could have built it all with a white base plate. <laughs> He's currently building an enormous hoff mock uh, with um, the hangar and lots of yeah. um, precipitous walls and everything. It's, it's really good, but uh, it does take a lot of white bricks. Uh, Galgate says, well, I don't know, where am I? I have a shaped white base plate that came with old bricks. Yeah, it might have been an old base plate, but it was white at some point. Yeah. Uh, nice for a wintry scene, says Galgay. I have to uh, power through some comments now, or uh, I should catch up. <laughs> yeah. Someone says we're getting a gingerbread house set. Oh, is that possibly one of the new um, winter set? The, the new winter set this year? That'd be uh, interesting. Yeah, Robin Hull was mustering around that the other day. Or was it earlier today, possibly? Right. I don't remember. I don't know where they hear these rumours, but my finger is definitely not on that pulse, so I'll just take what I can from other people. <laughs> Doc Sampson says so you can't find my replay of my 72 hour live stream. Yeah, I haven't actually published that because I, uh, I built an actual set that I will be publishing for that, but um, since I have been thinking about it, I might as well just publish that one. I don't usually publish my live streams, as uh, I don't want to clutter up my channel too much with them. Well, that one's a special occasion, isn't it? I think you make an exception. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. I think Buttchop's trying to do a, a playlist of everybody's streams as well. All so. right, yeah. Um, You'd like that probably then. Yeah. Um, I'm missing a part. Where is it? Galgit says we can have our own version of the Hangouts. <laughs> I didn't delete my stream now, Galgit, but uh, I'll see if I can publish it. That would be cool. We shall ask him. <laughs> Oh. It's a missing piece of my 72 hour review. Are we reviewing all of them? Ah, oh, I think we're doing a best of comp, so. Right. You want some Vega footage in there, right? I wonder if they're using top chat over live chat. We are using top chat, but uh, since there usually isn't that much going on in. Uh, in uh, in our chats because we don't have a thousand viewers and a thousand people chatting. Top chat is not that different from from full chat, but I can put on lie all messages visible. It didn't change anything. 
I confess, I'm well, mine's set to top uh, to live chat, but I just haven't had time to read it, so <laughs> I'm relying on my wingman here to do that for me. Can I recommend the Excelsior? Asks uh, Julie Brick City. It, it depends on what sort of recommendation you want for what purpose you want to set. It's an, a fantastic display piece. It looks good on the shelf. Uh, it's not a very good Nerf gun, so I would <laughs> recommend it as Nerf as a uh, as a uh, gun to use in Nerf battle. Well, first of all, it doesn't shoot foam darts, it shoots hard plastic needles. <laughs> uh, second, it's uh, it's a fun playset, but it's not minifigure scale, so it won't fit into uh, with your own minifigures. It's micro scale, it has a micro scale micro figures and some micro scale uh, uh, dinosaurs in it. Micro scale, you say? Maybe I should be, be making a Micropolis spaceport for it to land in. Yeah, it'll take up box. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge, yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed building it. It's a fun build, uh, cool techniques. And uh, the, the mechanism to actually fire is cool. So uh, it sort of depends on what you want to use it for. Yeah, Doc is I doing everything. Avoid things that um, <laughs> I think are probably just going to end up being display pieces, with the odd exception, like this one, mm. and Lady Liberty, which is very nice as well. But I kind of think, no, I'd rather have things that would fit into my city or you know, buy, buy pieces that would make me something for Micropolis. Because um, I think yeah, that's very understandable, a that. better spend, really. Doc says, quick, everybody, type faster, so I lose the chat, apparently. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have any games on this, so you won't be winning any points. For, yeah, uh, Jules Brick City is trying the bricks. <laughs> nope. Check his work. bricks. Fortunately, uh, Cass hasn't uh, hasn't joined the twenty uh, first century now. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, when it, whenever he types bricks, you just say in a very deadpan voice, "Julian, you've lost all of your bricks. Start again." <laughs> Julian, you have minus five bricks. Exactly. I've been building some more great ball contraption recently. I didn't know that, Cass. Did you say Greg from GJ Bricks was streaming last night? Uh, Ask Scal game. Last night? Uh, I don't know about that. I'm a little lost. Did you mention something? Well, Galgate is wondering if there's a stream she missed. No, oh, no I, thought I thought he came onto JC's stream earlier today and said that he was possibly doing something tomorrow with Dr. McBrick. And I was going to send him a message, but I haven't yet got around to doing that because, well, it's a bit pointless because he's asleep at the minute, I suspect. But, um, or no, Greg, maybe he isn't. But uh. Ingrid Wynn is asking, great blue pile of bricks. What are you mocking with it? I'm going to, oh, this is, it's very exciting, actually. I'm going to make a bag of bricks. Oh, boring. And then I'm going to put it down in my storage. Never to see the light of day again. Until I take it out and build it again. Maybe Sorry. one day when I have a lot of space for uh, displaying. Currently, I do not have any space for displaying. I when's have been planning. Hmm? When's your next mock coming? Ooh. Um, uh, it it will be coming either. I uh, hopefully by the by next month. Ooh. Uh, I have a lot of editing to do to make those perfect, and I'm sort of a perfectionist, so it's uh, it's going slow. We hadn't noticed that, had we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I, mean, I, I mustn't upset you by saying your things are perfect, because of course they are. <laughs> of course, of course they're perfect. All my stuff is perfect. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully it will be out uh, next okay. month. By the, by the time of next month, that's be my next month. Uh, and yeah, I only have editing done, so my mock is actually standing over here, right <gasps> outside of you. Move the camera, move the camera. Uh, 
it and really I'm, I'm fairly excited for this. Is it hmm? another puzzle box? Ooh. Is it another puzzle box? Hmm, who knows? I think it might be. It might be another puzzle box. Oh, hey guy, hello. What are you doing? You went away from your spot. Hmm. It's all right, we can still see her. Yeah, a little. <laughs> I love it when you can see her tail in your your video because it just it just sits there and just this when you spread just it up. Back and forth. It's the best when uh, the tail hits one of the pile of bricks and just separates it. <laughs> I heard a great, great brick great city says. Oh, go on. It says dual cast for uh, one thousand three hundred thirty-seven points. <laughs> now where's that band hammer? <laughs> Julian has been banned. Actually, that is a fair point. How do I make somebody? I don't know how I go about making somebody a, a mod on my chat. Can't you, uh, uh, can't you just use? Can't you just write next to them? Enable well, moderation I, on them. If, only if they say something. Yes. I was, I yeah, was if they say something. Uh, other than that, you can uh, you can uh, link them on uh, on like a community management page page uh, oh. settings page but yeah you can if they say something you can just mod them right there i think can you say if, like a maniac hi or something please you want me to say hi yeah because uh, <laughs> i'd be quite useful to have you as a mod i think go to channel report well oh yeah obviously i can't uh, mod hello <laughs> hey, hello it says so now i it's my Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Ooh, moderator. Ha, Galia, Julian, has he not sent it yet? Obviously I've sent it, Galia, come on. I'm not just wasting time and until you all forget about it. You won't forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I think Looks you have like I haven't finished there. building it. <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have the power now? Uh, I, I'm blue and I have a wrench next to my name, so it looks really? like I have some power. Excellent. I mean, it seems to be fairly well behaved so far, but you never know, do you? <laughs> never know, yeah. There might be fist fights breaking out when Julian wants to duel everybody. Something bizarre I've noticed some in some chats is people coming in and and begging to become moderators. Yeah, I've never quite understood that. No, it's you, you don't it's beg so to be fun. a mod, you get invited. Yeah, and, and it's it's not super exciting <laughs> to be a moderator. No, but I do wonder if some some of these people possibly are the younger folk and they see it as a kind of sign Status. of status. Yeah. So and so made me a mod on their channel, Yaboo. <laughs> I'm actually caught up with the chat. Those old ge geezers are just like, yeah, whatever, we'll be a mod. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In fact, I think, I can't remember who it was that for, made me a mod the first time, and I looked at that and I'm like, what's this? What do I do with this? <laughs> I've got what, no idea. What now? Oh, oh, no, responsibility. Exactly. Maybe I should stop drinking, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Start banning people left and right. Yeah. Banning the mods is a bad move, isn't it, Rune? <laughs> See, if you've got so many mods, you, you might end up with mod war going on. <laughs> yeah. Galgate says it's not that exciting as you have to watch the chats and you can't just enjoy the streams. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But since I've employed my, my wingman to do that anyway, I thought, well, you know, next step is moderation, isn't it? <laughs> Everything in moderation, isn't that what they say? Ah, I'm just gonna hide. <laughs> I must say, inviting someone on to, to help you with the chat seems like a really fabulous idea. I remember Vicky talking of the, the live stream the other last week, and she was building the same set, 
Um, Paul, Paula, you spent so much time trying to interact with the chat and keeping an eye on that that I think she ended up after a couple of hours of only possibly building this <laughs> Yeah, so, but Vicky never really gets any building done on her streams. Oh, does she not? Okay. <laughs> that's so just good. how it goes. She just talks and talks. And, uh, well, it's good to interact with your viewers, I guess. Yeah, yeah of course. Being a mod is work, Ugh, monitoring for trolls, <laughs> says Doc yeah. Samson. Indeed. Good policy, Cass. What? Uh, a... Whatever you just were talking about, probably. Ah, uh, having a trollmeister. <laughs> Ingrid has to go, just realized I have to make the bank before they close. Oh no, the bank. Are they even open on a Saturday? Quick, run. Don't you make it. Galligate ask, asking when I'm in Japan, am I going to pick up the Asian exclusive sets? And uh, I will definitely be stopping by the, a Lego store if I can find some. And, uh, There's no I, idea if they're still available from the Lego store. Yeah, at that um, point, it will be November. So. Yeah. Um, well, top tip from my friend that found them for me, all three sets. Um, I didn't actually need the the Dragon Boat race because that was then available in the UK, but I didn't call him that, so he bought me all three from there. <laughs> it's fine. I'm, I'm selling the second copy to someone. It's not a problem. Um, but uh, he actually went to, he found a small independent toy shop, not a Lego store, but an ah, independent right. toy shop where clearly people hadn't necessarily, you know, all the scalpers and people who were desperate for the thing had not necessarily thought to look. And right. he got it at retail price or slightly under because he paid cash. So, oh, okay. you know, and it does help that he, he's half Japanese himself and his parents are Japanese. Or one of parents is Japanese. Um, so... And haggle and all the rest of it in the local language, but um, I'm sure there's possibly a better chance of finding one available in a shop like that than necessarily trying. I mean, by all means, look in the Lego store, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's none, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be stopping by some toy stores. Yeah, mm, you going to Tokyo or somewhere else? Yeah, uh, Kyoto. <gasps> God, I loved Kyoto. I went in my dark ages in 2012, and it was oh. just incredible. In fact, Kyoto nearly killed me. I was there for, I don't know, uh, 72 hours maybe, three days, and I walked and I walked and I walked, and I still hadn't seen it all, and I was just <laughs> so tired. By the time we left Kyoto, I was dead on my feet. But it yeah. was absolutely stunning city. And, uh, We're going to be visiting a lot of temples and parks yeah. and forests yeah. and such. Yeah. And I think my problem was I thought, well, we used. Um, I went with a, a guided, a guided tour basically, a company called Inside Japan Tours. I don't know if they're still around. I think they are, but I'm not sure. Um, and we had, I think there were twelve of us on our trip. Uh, and we had one guide who was an English guy who'd lived in Japan for eight years and taught himself Japanese. Well, that meant we knew all of the the kind of really good places to visit that weren't hideous tourist traps. I mean, we did go to some hideous tourist traps inevitably, but he'd take us to restaurants that were a little bit off the beaten track and they were really authentic and, you know, absolutely great. Um, and we'd used, um, we'd, we'd gone through most of the travel on the Shinkansen between various cities. We did a tour that involved about seven different um, cities around the Japan. Oh, nice. We bought a two-week rail pass, which you can only buy if you're a foreigner, actually. If you live in Japan, you're not entitled to buy one, which is a bit of a pain. So poor old Tom and the guy had to pay full price. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And uh, we oh, right, yeah. a little bit about, you know, stations and going around and whatnot. So I wasn't completely against the idea of using the local trains or whatever in Kyoto, but it was just so much to see. I thought, no, I'm just going to walk. And we consequence that I was absolutely dead by the end of three days. Um, but 
but I, I stayed in Tokyo for a little bit later on after um, after the tour had finished and met up with a Japanese friend of mine who's I've been corresponding with on via email since the mid nineties. Very cool. Oh, that's nice. Um, uh, and then I was quite happy to, you know, pop around Tokyo on the trains and whatever because I kind of got used to how things worked, although I don't read any Japanese. Um, that all of the signage is in three different languages, Japanese traditional characters, Japanese modern characters and English usually. And if you're on a tube or something like that, even on the side of the train, all three of these versions of what the station is, what the train is and whatever, Keep cycling around, so you just have to wait a little bit, and you'll find um, the next iteration with you know the information you need, which is really helpful. Right. Also, downloaded um, I think it was an app for the subways of Tokyo, which had a, a really good tube map, a bit like the London Underground map, you know, the iconic sort of stylized map of where everything went, and you could switch actively switch it between Japanese annotation in English so even if you didn't necessarily you, you knew where you wanted to go in English and then you look at what the Japanese characters were and just wait until that appeared on the train and train was like yes that's the one I need <laughs> but it was a, it was an absolutely fabulous adventure and I loved every minute and I'd, I'd love to go back but I cannot see it happening in the short term but no I'm sure you'll absolutely adore Kyoto because it is just the main yeah we're going to meet up with a friend who lives somewhere in, in Japan. Oh, even better. If they've got local knowledge, that would be great. Yeah. Well, she is from here, but she moved there. Yeah, well, even that. I mean, it's, it's better than just floundering around as a oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. tourist on your own. We don't know Japanese. She does, at least. Exactly. Is that um, your friend doing there? Hmm? Is that your honeymoon you're going for? Yes, basically. Actually, it's the uh, yeah. Well, it's it'll sort of be. It's actually the the, the wedding itself we're going for. Oh, nice. Oh, yes, going we were having a discussion the other day, weren't we? About are you actually married on paper or not yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we we ha we have married. We just uh, haven't had like a ceremony or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a small thing, but. Nothing major. Um, then we're going to do a, a traditional Japanese wedding ceremony wow, in that's Kyoto. Awesome. That sounds absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, I hope. The other thing to do if you find yourself in Kyoto is go on a walking tour in Gion, G I O N, which is All the right. central district. Um, now, people have a, a very um, skewed uh, what's the word? I hear about geisha. Um, they're not what you think. They're, they're entertainers, oh, yeah. but they're not prostitutes. But they are, it, it's fascinating. The walking tour I did when I was there told you all about the history and, and how much it costs to actually train to be a geisha. Yeah. We're, we're actually, um, uh, for the wedding dinner, we're going to have uh, uh, entertainers called Maikos or something. Yes. Yes, which it, are geishas in training. Exactly that, yeah. And they're, they're, you know, just the start of their career, singing, dancing, whatever, playing music. Um, but they're fascinating, yeah. fascinating culture. It really was. Yeah. No, no, we have to good. catch up with some chat, actually. Sure. Mm, sorry, I've been waffling along. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, Mockbricks wants me to buy both, or maybe he wants me to buy two of uh, the... Uh, the uh, the, the Chinese sets or right. Chinese New Year's sets. Uh, if I come across the um, the Chinese New Year's dinner set, I will get that. I'm not really interested in the other ones. I'm surprised you're not interested in the um, uh, the Dragon Dance being topic fan. It, yeah, it looks nice and has the kinetic, but it's it's not a really not a big set in any way, and yeah. I, agree, though, the, I the think the novelty will best. wear off very quickly. The dinner one is by far the best of the three. The woodshop teacher uh, uh, saying that 
I should be uh, taking apart the Lunar Lander at moments. We should have done like a split thing. <laughs> that would have been, been, cool. been cool, but I haven't gotten the Lunar Lander yet, unfortunately. What would have been really cool is for us to coordinate so that we reach the midpoint at the same time. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Then I just carry on dismantling mine and you put yours back together. No. <laughs> uh, Galgades parents has been to Japan, but she hasn't, but she'll go to go. Yeah, I, I think after that trip, I will probably recommend everyone to go. <laughs> well, I was raving about it for years afterwards. So, well, as you can see, I'm still raving about it. So, <laughs> Little Bricks is here. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. We've nice. been waffling on and ignoring the chat, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah. Woodshop teacher would also like to go to Japan. Doc Samson's got to go, but keep his eyes open for my uh, seventy-two hour leg <laughs> stream. Yeah, I think I think you're having your arm twisted there, aren't you? Yeah, I guess specifically for making uh, making a, a, a playlist of all of them. I I would probably get a message from uh, from uh, from Butt Shop at some point uh, asking what's going on. Mm. I've forgotten to take my own advice and drink some water, so I'm just gonna... All right, yeah, I have my lemonade. Last cup of tea before I started. Michael Afels is here, welcome. Hello, hello. Nice to have you here. I can display the dragon dance on my table at work, says uh, Galgaden. Yeah, I could. I have a lot of Lego already at work. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more when hurt, right? Yeah, uh, I actually have more dis Lego displayed at work than I have at home because work has more room for that. I have the bucket wheel excavator and... Oh god, you can take that apart, it's massive! And you have yeah, no yeah, before I build it I'll do an unwind stream of it. It's going to take forever because it's a really well-built solid Technic set. Yeah. And I mean, my so fingers are going to hurt. They are going to hurt big time. It was the first Technic set I ever built, and I bought it specifically as a parts pack for Great Ball Contraction. Yeah. But I thought, well, with, with everything I buy, if it's just a parts pack, I will always build it once just to say I've done it and see how things go. And you know, as, it, as I'd never done any Technic before at all, I thought, well, it might teach me a few things about gearboxes and stuff. It just taught me, oh my God, how how different Technic is and how painful it is to take it apart yeah 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 it's so terrible need some sort of tool to grab pins and such well you know this bit's your friend <laughs> you can't yeah but pulling pins out can you? sometimes you have to pull pins out from us and you can't push them from the other side and mm. But Shop was going crazy doing his 72 hour stream. <laughs> yeah, at some point I couldn't find I couldn't find the 72 hour stream. I, I woke up and was like, who's streaming? None none of the ones on the lists are streaming. And I found Butt Shop streaming. I was like, what? I think that's a pretty safe default actually, if you if you can't find what's going on. Yeah, apparently. Uh Galgate says uh, we need to do a longer stream next year for the 72 hour stream. Well, I, I'm hoping like more people will jump on onto it so it will be uh so we shouldn't really take up more time in the stream we should have like equal slots all around and yeah I can, <laughs> I can understand that maybe in the beginning if you're not sure how many people are going to take part then by all means you know people can um yeah sure i can grab a big slot in the beginning but if um, yeah if a lot of people slot. is joining then i'll have i'll be happy to but as a newbie to it, I didn't know that that was the case. So I was just looking at the thing going, oh, well, that's all full. I can't do any of that. And I didn't yeah. I didn't know anybody well enough. Well, maybe Bart Chop and Pasta, but that was it, really. Um, to say, look, can I can I steal some of your time or whatever? Now right. I probably would, you know, and, and Bart Chop's made it perfectly clear that that's, that's fine. That, that's what people are expecting. But at the time, I had no idea. So I, I literally just took a slot that was free. Which was fine because actually it was convenient for me. But you know, there were other times that you thought, well, actually, maybe I would prefer to do that. But 
someone else has got you know nine hours or eight hours or something in there yeah you, you can't necessarily um sneak in exactly also uh, next year hopefully it'll be a case of um doing more collaborative streams too because i don't think we did quite yeah that would be fun okay. it could be like a relay collaboration the the ones that have have their slot is collaborating in the slot before and the slot after or something like that. Yeah, so like yeah, that would be fair. You, if you pass it on stream. Now here's something I've never seen in the instructions before. It's like a, a cartoon kapow splat. It says click click here. All right, yeah. And you have to make sure that the pieces are actually um, clicked together. <laughs> that. Uh, I've seen that before. It happens a lot in Technic sets that have uh, these ball joints and such that needs to be clicked together. Ah, uh, yeah. So uh, they have to make sure. Or some gears, uh, specific types of gears. Uh, all right. Uh, Little Bricks is asking, what set is that? Uh, Lego Maniac. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. It's This is the Rexelsior from the Lego Movie 2. It's in some pieces at the moment because I'm dismantling it for storage as i have no room for it and it'll be in some more pieces soon yeah it'll be in more, even more pieces oh yeah uh, and galligate has answered him right under <laughs> uh it's from the lego movie 2 rex's ship rex Elser, i think i can All right That's because Bricks for Chris had to go to the works, so Bretshop had to take over his slot. Oh, right. That's why I couldn't find... Oh, I, yeah, I was thinking I probably had uh, had some issues. Uh, I was thinking I probably had the time wrong, but I couldn't find anyone streaming. So, all right, that explains it. Yeah, I think he was on call all of a sudden and, and had to basically go and earn some money. All right, okay. Messing about online. <laughs> Little Bricks is asking, how long have you guys been doing YouTube? I started 16th of August last year. I started on the 30th of June last year. Yeah. So we are freshmen relative to most other people. YouTube toddlers. <laughs> yeah. That's why all my videos are uh, so uh, so amateurish. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> Well, if you're a perfectionist and that's how they're turning out and you're thinking they're amateurish, then you've got a long <laughs> job ahead. I have a lot of... Um, I could improve with my like editing and showing different things during a time lapse, but I, it's... Uh, well, my, my channel is sort of like an extension of my hobby and I would want to focus on the hobby of building Lego not sitting around editing videos so i sort of made the style of how to make those time lapses as efficient mm -hmm. as possible yeah well there's one thing i've been missing uh i don't know actually, maybe now they've only just started in the instructions there's little um nuggets of information about the apollo mission the lunar lander carries both fuel and an oxidizer to ignite the hypergolic hypergolic fuel since it's not possible to use fuel without an oxidizer in space. So that's what we built here. The fuel and the oxidizing tanks that go with them. Right. Now you know. Was that a, was that a gas type fuel or was it uh, liquid or was it solid? It wasn't solid. I'm, I'm presuming it was, um, it's normally kerosene and, and an oxidizer, I think. Certainly right. in some of the other stages though. I guess that's what they go with. I don't know. A uh, bomb, anyway. Woodshop teacher is asking if Bricks for Chris is still doing videos. I haven't seen anything from him for some time. I don't really know. I haven't been following him before. so. I think he's gone very quiet and life's happened and stuff. I don't know, I don't know any more than that. But... Right. Seems to be a bit of a thing that people go through phases and when they stop for a bit or when they get interested again. Galgate says, like an Olympic pass the stream back on onto the next person. Exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're way behind on that. 
on the, <laughs> on the chat if that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Michael Afel is saying hello, Vega. She uh, She's currently on the edge of the table over here, not in the view for any camera. Actually, she's partially in view of the cat cam. There oh, is a tail. Oh, yeah. You need to put a, a trail of dreamies across where you're taking things apart. Then she'd wander up, over, wouldn't she? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told cats will do anything for dreaming. Oh, yeah. Galgate says to the woodshop teacher, he will soon, I believe, his city updates and his clocks collection. Our bricks for Chris will um, oh, yes. get more stuff out to, soon. He's been trying to collect every single Lego minifig clock. The I believe. Oh, nice. Um, Is there that many? He's found one or two in shops that aren't yet on brick set. So I think oh, really? um, oh, bricks are what the injury is for getting stuff onto brick set. Uh, I don't know what bricks are now, but apparently he does. I had an idea of making a, like a um, grandfather clock puzzle box. Oh, yeah. Which is about uh, like. The puzzle is about finding clues about what you should set the time to, and then the uh, the box opens up. Oh, that sounds awesome! Yeah, it's it's also in the theory. I I tried some some layouts, and I really couldn't figure out how I would do, doing it. But maybe I'll revisit when I'm made some more puzzle boxes, and I'm more confident in what I'm doing. Probably one of those projects that you know you have a, a seed idea for ages ago and then you kind of it doesn't happen until you've got to a stage where you're confident enough competent enough whatever to actually make it happen yeah so you know a little bit longer in the apprenticeship if you like and then then you'll be like oh yes i know how to do this now all of a sudden you wake up in the middle of the night and go i know how to do it yeah and your poor wife will be thumping you going go back to sleep <laughs> And I'll forget it the next morning. Yeah. I should have written it down. Um, yeah, that's one I had. Uh, another puzzle box idea I had was a uh, micropolis on each uh, each of the six sides of a cube. Have like a, a micropolis style skyscrapers, and then you need to pull and push push them all. Now this interests me a great deal. <laughs> Although I don't think I should be filmed live trying to undo it, but I think there might be a lot of squaring. <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a fun thing actually. Like if I sent uh, that one to you and you could uh, do a live stream of it, <laughs> and you could sit there at the other end cackling when I can't get it open. <laughs> I'll make it deliberately not openable. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Make great telly, but we might lose friendship. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm worth it. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Last time you're coming on my stream. So maybe I need to well, make some. I, I need to make I some. Have to be a moderator. To ban you. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Well, you're just turning me into a moderator that has to like monitor when I'm on your stream. So uh, now I'm gone. I'm not here. <laughs> so I have to work and stuff when I come on. He's in the half now. <laughs> I don't know these beavers. Galgate says he's one the one I used to watch all the time. And Jang. Oh, bricks for Chris. Yeah, yeah apparently. <laughs> Hoping his comeback. Two day shifts, I believe, so you can probably do more videos then. Woodshop teacher was watching Bricks for Chris and Jang and Alex and Nunes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would definitely watch that puzzle box video, says uh, Woodshop teacher. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. Maybe making that sometime. I also know JC has been asking for a puzzle box, wondering where his puzzle box is when I sent uh, one to Jacob. Uh, JC always wants to get in the act, doesn't he? Yeah. So I've been thinking about what would a um, 
Or yeah. toilets. Something toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. You've got to make toilet oh seat. My God. A toilet puzzle box. That'd be hilarious. I tell JC, hey, I made a puzzle box for you. Not, not shown it anywhere, not on Twitter on the, or Instagram or anything. And I send it to him, and it's a, it's a goddamn toilet. Oh, sometimes I have the worst ideas. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Since I was thinking, like, what, what could I possibly make that would be a small brick city puzzle box? That is hilarious. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Hey? Of course, uh, puzzle boxes works better under a cube or uh... oh, here, here's a cat visiting. Oh, yeah. Hello, puss. Puzzle boxes works best under a cube because uh, circular or curved bricks can't really slide that well. Sure. So it would be like a square square toilet. But that would work, still work. I'm toilet sure puzzle it could work. Flush it to open. Yeah, it would be. It, yeah, basically, yes. the mechanism would be uh, to enable and unlock the flushing mechanism so the toilet seat opens up. <laughs> oh, I like the sound of this so much. You have oh, to... and and inside would be um, um, would J would be JC's uh, logo. <laughs> that uh, you know that three uh, D uh, building logo he has. Yes. You're a very bad man, you know that. <laughs> Good thing it's not on the stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd have to watch it afterwards so we're safe. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to even make a video on a toilet puzzle box, but it would be hilarious sending that to him. It would. Absolutely. Because what else would it be? He, he makes a city, that's what he does. So what could a puzzle box be? It could be a city, but if I'm already making a micropolis, that would be the same thing. Mm, indeed. Can I scratch Vega under the chin? Of course, if you can. <laughs> if you can hit her. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm done with Rexelsior. It's here in a pile now. Okay. Um. So I'm just waffling, sitting here, uh, scratching Vega, and maybe reading the chat. Sounds like a perfect Saturday. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, look at Vegas is Galligan. Yeah, she's awesome. She is. I love her coloring. She's so beautiful. Yeah, she's amazing. She has um, each individual uh, like hair has three colors on it. Wow. It's, it's really weird. It, it's light on inside, br then brown, and then like black on the edges. Ah, excellent. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. She's an Abyssinian, uh, isn't she? Yes, one of um, which is apparently one uh, or or ba well based on or believed to be one of the the original Egyptian cats from that area, which uh -huh. is basically the style of cat that the Egyptians made sculptures and uh, pictures of. So basically, they they worship them as gods. <laughs> yeah, and this is the sort of type of cat they. Uh, uh, they depicted. Mm, I can understand why. Yeah. And Vegas sat there going, why aren't you worshipping me like a god? <laughs> you already are. Yeah. There she is. And lay down again. Oh, that was sticky roller. Yeah. Is it noisy? A little bit, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Trying not to make meow says Elliot. She looks like a puma. Yeah, she has a little puma eye to it. A tiny puma. See, this is why I like you on my live stream because people come and watch the cat and they don't see what I'm messing up, so it's fine. <laughs> if only Vega was doing something when you exploded Vega House, <laughs> so no one would have seen it. Here comes the roller again, says Elliot. Yeah, got to roll. Anywhere where Vegas sits, it's it's fur city. Mm. Fuzz city. Yeah. She's not called Miss Fuzzbutt for nothing. <laughs> just exactly. by name. 
Oh no, uh, she's called that uh, here at home as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Well, I'm she making... has a lot of names. I think I'm making the hatch that opens now. Oh, so nice. Technic pins going in. That's great. If I was going to do anything else on the stream, I'd need to clear this up, and that's going to make a dang ruckus. Can you mute yourself for a bit? I don't know. Um, maybe. Yeah, I can mute my microphone, of course. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. So I should probably do that, but where is my box that I put stuff in? I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. I really don't know. Oh, yeah, I know where it is. Or, you know where it is, but I know what it's used for. Use a cat. It, it still contains uh, my previous uh, unwind. Ah. It's, uh, it contains the uh, Lego story set. So basically, you haven't cleared up after yourself yet. No. Uh, I, got, I got a little bummed out from that Lego stuff when I unwinded that Lego story set. I actually managed to. Uh, um, um, corrupt my uh, recording of it. Right. So I don't have a recording of unwinding that Lego story set from uh, when I was a guest on your previous stream. Uh. Unfortunately, so I've just been le left it there because uh, I didn't need to film like a ro rotation of it because I don't have the source for it. Yeah, sure. Ah, here we are. There's the door. And there's the camera that filmed the, the first steps on the moon. Oh, nice. And the, the little thing in the book says, the camera in quadrant four filmed Armstrong as he climbed down the ladder and placed his foot on the moon. Nice. Next question, which is quadrant four? Oh, we haven't finished building this bit yet. It was me. George City is wondering how long we're going to stream. Well, as long as people are watching, we're going to stream, I guess. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, so, I could still be talking to myself when everyone else is gone if I haven't finished it, but that's fine. This build will take two to three hours. So we're one hour in, and I guess we'll then have, I think she has like two and a half, uh, one and a half, or wait, yeah, one and a half hours left, maybe. Yeah. Martin Martin Ferenzi is here. Welcome. Ah, Welcome Martin. You. Hello, Martin. Martin is from my lug. Oh, nice. Yep. We need the Saturn V next to the lander, to be honest, he says. Yeah, the problem with that is this. Look, I'll show you. This is my Lego room. Oh, it's all going to go a bit funny. And my Saturn V's over there. <laughs> and I can't actually reach my Saturn V until I take my city apart. Just so, toss the lander over there. Not going to happen today. <laughs> I did contemplate getting it out, and I thought the only way to do that really is is just try and hook it and make it fall over gracefully and catch it. And I wasn't guaranteed that the catching it part was going to happen, so I thought, no, not going to do it. <laughs> Says, I don't care. Yeah. Delegate says it's very annoying in large streams when they dig through the box and you can't hear anything. <laughs> Probably in those forever sorting. Uh, yes. Streams. Yeah, that is the trouble, isn't it? That Lego is noisy. Yeah. There's no getting around it. We should put the Finnish lander in the Micropolis. <laughs> mm, I think there's a bit of a difference in scale there. Slightly. I did suggest it earlier because uh, it is the size of four blocks, isn't it? Isn't it 32 by 32, that plate? Uh, Twenty-four, twenty-six by 26, which actually is exactly the middle of a 4 by 4 micropolis. Yeah, you can put a road around it. Yeah. Perfect. You can make like a micropolis... Uh, well, you can remove the lunar lander, and then you have like a um, a uh, lunar park or something. Huge uh, micropolis, uh, like fun fair <laughs> lunar park. Maybe. Where you can drive around with rovers and stuff. 
Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Julian is saying we should, this is another 72 hour stream. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, God. Uh, now, where is this supposed to be going? Is the next question. Julian can send you another Saturn V. <laughs> okay. Go on then. If, if you do that, Julian, I'll make sure to send you your Millennium Falcon. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Yeah. We have a swooshing specialist in our lug, says Marton. We do. His name is Alec. And uh, he kind of, he can't get over the fact that we had a, a show and tell evening a few months ago, last year sometime. And somebody had bought um, a spaceship mock there's quite a few spaces in in the lug, which is great because I'm I'm one of them, a bit an amateur compared to them. Anyway, they brought this mock along with them <clears throat> and talked about how they built it. And uh, Alec, bless him, decided to demonstrate how swishable the thing was. Can you guess what happened next? It wasn't very swishable. Uh, no, he picked it up and and it bit well. Swished it to the ground. Swished it to the ground, or swished it to back to the tabletop, and and the guy had to spend a little bit of time putting it all back together. So at least when I mess things up, like my monorail, it was my own thing that I'd done wrong, not somebody else's. Drop tests as gal game. Yeah, but I think he's been forgiven. Is that right, Martin? I think people think the person in question is still speaking to him, so it's fine. And it's Lego; it goes back together, so fine. The Lego figs would feel like Gilligan among the minipots, says the original teacher. What was that? The Lego figs in your Micropolis would feel like Gilligan among the minipots. Uh, <laughs> they would not know what happened. Julius Brick City says it was only 85 euros, so I got a second Saturn five. <laughs> oh, stop. That, that sounds just too cheap. It's not fair. It's a good deal. I think it's a good deal. I think there were 109 pounds. So whatever that is in euros, it's more than more than 80 for sure. Right. Although, for how much longer is anyone's guess? I stopped by a local uh, toy store today and was thinking of getting one of those space sets uh, to build today. But uh, I uh, enjoy taking things apart uh, uh, more than building things in stream, as I can more focus on stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and nah, I'll don't do that. And then I walked past the, uh, uh, and behind the checkout, there was, uh, uh, there was the Silent Mary. Oh yes. They still had that in store, but only one. And I've been looking at that Silent Mary every time I've been there, and it's like I should get that before it's gone. Yeah. And <laughs> yes, I did get that this time. I like Silent Mary. It's great. I'm sure you uh, won't. And then I definitely couldn't buy any space sets. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you get a decent price or? Nah. No. Uh, around like what? Well, uh, at least, well, I, I'm converting in my head now. At least two hundred pounds. Mm, it's a bit much, isn't it? But yeah, I did see it on offer on this. I did see it on offer for a hundred and forty at some point, but at the time. By the time I saw it, it was sold out. <laughs> mm. That's a shame. Yeah. Ah, it's just money, it's hype. Yeah, just money. <laughs> George Brick City says they, they had the Saturn Vs at Smith Toys. It's 120 euros normally. OK. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great deal. Yeah. Mr. Brick is here. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Mr. Brick. I've I just finished uh, dismantling this set here. That's why I'm not doing much more. <laughs> and uh, the Lunar Lander. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm almost finished bag two. Oh, that's nice. How many bags are there? Four. Four, yeah. Then we're basically halfway. That seems sounds about right. Yeah, that's not bad. Up, up, to, four, uh, up to three hours build. Yeah. So we're, uh, yeah. Another factoid in the uh, instructions, the laser reflector in quadrant two was placed on the surface of the moon. When a laser right, light yeah, that one. when a laser light was pointed at it from the earth, the distance to the moon could be measured. There we go. There's a 
a little nice. laser pointer thing, uh, reflector. Yeah. And that just sits in, how does it go? Sits in here. It's also one of the definitive proofs that we've been there. Indeedy. Because we but, can actually measure the light coming from it. Well, the conspiracy it, theorists still don't believe that, do they? No. And some theories is like, yeah, we don't believe they went to the moon at the point they said, but we do believe they went to the moon later. It's like... And that's like, what's, like, what's the point of that? 400,000 people, they reckon, it took one way or another to get people to the moon. How, that, how on earth would you get 400,000 people to keep a secret like that? They probably argue that they haven't. That's why we know it's uh, know about the conspiracy, <laughs> <laughs> or something. They they all they always have an argument. <laughs> the best argument I know is that the um, uh, against the conspiracy, I guess, uh, or or the, the real thing is uh, is that the Russians that the USA was uh, in competition to get to the moon, the Russians have never claimed it was fake. No. And they've never bothered to try themselves either. No, because, yeah, because, uh, well, all right, they got to the moon. Well, we're going to give up then. Not, we don't need to do that anymore. And, yeah. And, yeah, they knew they got to the moon. There, there's just no fake stuff about it. Very true. It's a good point. So now we get to put more stickers on some of the gold leaf stuff. Did you see Captain Newton do a mod for the astronaut backpacks, says Galleon? I did, actually. I thought that was very good. What did he do specifically about them? Um, well, the current um, current thing is just basically one of these regular common or garden thingies. Um, and they, they don't have actual tanks. It's much more of a sort of rectangular solid pack that they wore. All right, yeah. So, you know, the minifig neck clips that only come in transparent um, colour with a, a thing that goes over the neck and then two studs on the back? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, he got one of those and <clears throat> painted it white because it only comes in transparent. Um, and then uh, Something grey too. But added a few tiles oh. and stuff. And then he changed the gloves as well because the gloves were apparently dark bluish grey or an approximation thereof okay. um, instead of white. Well, it looks pretty good actually. I'm, I'm considering doing it myself apart from the painting bit, which I don't know about that. And I'm not against right. it, but I just don't have the wherewithal to do it sensibly myself at this point. So. Mm. There we go. Not bad for stickers. Oh, nice. Shiny, 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 shiny. So that's that. Daddy doll. What next? Martin Martin says the downside of this set is definitely the minifigs. Yeah. I mean the old the other thing I think he did was put um a United States flag on the the arm. Uh, which is uh, fair fair enough. I don't know where he got the stickers for that, but Galgate says you can't fake the tensions on the people faces in the control rooms in my opinion they can't be all Oscar winners <laughs> <laughs> that's a great <laughs> argument yeah so many people in that room and they're all really really worried yeah like the tension you can feel the tension Martin asks if you remember the old backpacks with the handles <sighs> backpacks with the handles I'm not entirely sure but actually I have something that reminds me of something. I have a tiny set called Astronaut with Satellite. Mm. It's like from the 90s so, sometimes. And I, he has like a backpack with handles. So he sort of like has a jetpack for, for his space. Ah, oh, yes, I know exactly what you mean. And I do have one. I just can't remember where it is. <laughs> it's in my city, possibly somewhere. But I, yes, I know exactly what you mean. It is cool. Yeah. So that's a that's a cool set. It has a shiny space helmet, a gold yeah, shiny. Put that one out. Um, Bruce McCandless was the first person to go away from the space shuttle, um, whichever shuttle it was, with a personal jetpack. Right. I think it was really, and that was about 1982, possibly or 84. Can't remember the details, but 80s, I reckon. 
Um, and it's I think, absolutely terrifying. I think Lego may well have released it around that time for obvious marketing reasons. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, so like the space set with oh yeah, so Astro the satellite is sort of based on him. Hmm. Oh, it could be, yeah. Uh, Galgate doesn't know how he put the USA flags on their sleeves, paint or stickers. I have a feeling it was probably a sticker, but where he got them, I don't know. I don't think he could paint something that small and it not look terrible. And he didn't look terrible. That's what I meant. Sorry. Michael Zafel says that your stickers are better applied than on his. I'm not even using the patented Jacob method of soapy water either. Just you can ask Senator Bullock, says Martin. What? Well, how to put a sticker on? Sure. Possibly how to spacewalk. Oh, uh, yes. Well, if I had a number, I'd give her a ring. <laughs> I'd toss it. <laughs> toss it. What yeah, if I had the number, yeah. <laughs> I can't stand. Uh, it's it's there's something. Uh, movies with Sandra Bullock, I just can't stand them. Oh really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm completely ambivalent. I don't couldn't care less either way, really. But that's. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't watch much, do you? <laughs> Not really. No. You can ask Sandra Bullock about the jetpack thingy. <laughs> I oh, saw it on TV, so it must have been real. Um, oh. Boys and girls, I'm in trouble. Who oh, no, knows what's going on? <laughs> Got some leftovers. I've not been paying attention. <laughs> oh God! It looks like right there, doesn't it? On that black one there. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's fair enough. However, <laughs> I've also got these, and I know exactly where they go. They go in down here. Ah, uh, underside of the tanks. Built upside down. Oh, okay. So they're not actually attached on the bottom. No, they're attached tanks. by a attached to the foot. sides on. Oh, okay, right. Because they're those ones with the holes. Yeah. I was worried that I might not be able to get them out, having built lots of other stuff. But it looks. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can uh, get all these files okay. stacked up. So I'm going to mute myself for a while. Right. I'll just waffle along for a little bit and see what happens. Um, yeah. I've actually come pretty much to the end of bag two, which is great. Some more leftovers, which look like I should have them left and not extra, extra leftovers. Put my little pot down here. Now, bag three, as it is, well, I call it bag, but it's in a tray now. Um, there's lots of small bits, so it could be a bit fiddly. And there's also mm, lots of gold pieces. Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to this bit. And then it looks like four, there's quite a bit more to build. So there might be bigger, chunky pieces there. So let's get cracking. Wondering how greasy my fingers are. Will I get finger marks on the gold? But no, we'll be all right. Uh, so we're after four of these. One, two, three, four. Have a quick look at the chat whilst my, my wingman's busy. Uh, it has gravitas. Somebody's making rotten jokes in the chat. Um, that's uh, do, do, do. I should live stream from Caterham, says Martin. Now that's um, Caterham is the Caterham Model Show is one of our logs big events throughout the year. And in theory, it's quite a good idea to live stream from Caterham. Well, there are two problems. First of all, I don't have sufficient followers yet to live stream from a mobile device. So I've got to use my laptop and the webcam attached to it. You have to have a thousand followers now to live stream from a mobile or um, 
an iPad or something like that. The second issue is Wi-Fi. I don't know whether there is Wi-Fi there and if it's sufficiently up to the job of streaming. So whilst I'm perfectly happy to take some video, like I've done in the past, and, and throw it up onto my channel, um, live streaming Caterham could be a bit more of an issue. But you never know, might get to do some great ball contraption possibly, or something like that. Would people watch great ball contraption going wrong live is a question. Maybe they would. Anyway, that shows in September. If any of you find yourself in the Caterham area, it's the 21st of September. All day, pretty much. Well, I don't know, 10.30 till 4, something like that. And it's a nice little show. It would be great to see you if you can come along. Oh, these are a bit tight fitting. Basically, we have to jam them in the diagonal. Well, not the diagonal, the bits on the quadrants there in the diagonal, but this just keeps everything in a proper octagon, I think. And then these go in the middle. More chat. Julian's Brick City says, who has Super 7? Uh, if I knew what Super 7 was, I might be able to answer. <laughs> Greasy fingers on the gold need to get the polish out after the build, says the woodshop teacher. Yeah, probably. Martin says, how bad is it bandwidth wise? Well, streaming, I've got no idea, if I'm honest, because I've got fast broadband at home and I don't really take a lot of notice. But uh, I need my own satellite dish, says um, Gallagade. Funny enough, um, you know, I work in the broadcast industry. I might know a few people with a satellite dish, but whether they bring it to a show specially for me, I don't know. Could ask, possibly. Although the guy that organises our catering show might be a bit miffed if a, an OB truck turns up in his car park, blocking the way out. Otherwise, it'd be great publicity for the show, so you never know. You never know. So those bits go in here. Um, we need a GBC bloopers video as 80% of the time we're chasing balls, says Martin. Yes, he is not wrong there. Um, the trouble is if I spend my time videoing all the time we spend chasing balls round, I won't be chasing balls round and there'll be even more balls on the floor. So might have to think about that carefully. But uh, as I'm just here as the film crew, then I might get some sideways looks from some of our other lug mates. Probably Alex. <laughs> and that's a different Alex to Swooshable. Alex. Alec. The Gallagher or borrow the BBC truck. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Super 7. Oh, oh, of course, yes. Super 7 is a Lotus Super 8. Sorry. Martin. Super 7 is a Lotus. Super 8 is a format and a movie. Yes, okay. I do not have the Super 7. Cars. I, I kind of admire them from a distance they're not particularly my thing so i don't tend to buy car related lego particularly but interesting that you mention it now these have got to go all the way around here this is where things start getting tad fiddly to go on the edges Ooh. i don't know if anybody if you've watched um annie from small brick city do her speed bills she spends quite a lot of time right at the beginning organising all of her parts into beautifully neat rows. I can't be bothered with that, so I have to spend some time grovelling through the pots to find what I need. But uh, once I've got the bits, it's not too bad. Certainly won't be any, winning any uh, awards for the speed I'm building this, but, you know, it's mostly about the enjoyment of it and... Uh, not the speed here. Oh, I spy Legolomaniac back. 
but perhaps he hasn't quite got all of his things organised yet. Dare say he'll unmute himself when he's ready. Garlicade, I loved how the Americans pronounced Caterham. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. I've just got Caterham 7. I know exactly what you're talking about now. Duh. Sorry. Trying to do too many things at once. I'm back. Hello. Hello. Don't they say Caterham or something like that, the Americans? No, it's Caterham. Caterham, says Mark. Caterham. Cat or ham. Cat or ham, yes. <laughs> Which do you go for, cat or ham? Me? Yeah. Uh, I would read that cater ham. No, no, no. I meant, oh, never mind. <laughs> I meant literally, you go for Oh, cat. yeah, cat or ham. Mm. Uh, the first as a pet and the second as a food, I guess. <laughs> That's that's a good answer. I'm sure Vegas very um, relieved to that about that. <laughs> First as a food and the second as a pet. That would be worse. <laughs> We're trying to distract you so we can nab the gold pieces. Ah, is that what your game is? No, nah, it's all right. I've got it. I've got I've got people watching. Look, <laughs> you will not thieve them from me. Michael Apples, I like to stretch out the bigger set builds, make the most of them. I'm reverse. I, I like to build them as fast as possible, if you might have seen my videos. <laughs> well, I'm kind of in the middle, really. I've seen some uh, on Reddit who um, um, who uh, does exercising and such and has uh, like a, a set weight go uh, weight goals for themselves and are like i'm gonna build one bag when i on each goal i reach <laughs> okay. of the millennium falcon and it has 17 bags and such wow. so it'll be really buff when he's finished that then yeah that didn't take long to unbuild says galgate yeah no it was a one hour unbuild unfortunately and i haven't much else prepared uh I have some other things that needs unbuilding, but I'll save those for some other streams. I have the upside down, for example. Unfortunately, I also have the Ninago docks and Ninjago docks and Ninjago City that needs to be taken apart. I can look after those for you. <laughs> Do you if need some parts all, for your mocks? If pieces are built, I'm not proud. <laughs> Feed ham to your cat, not the other way around. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Woodshaw teacher. Yes. So another factoid. The foil on the lunar lander was used for thermal and micrometeoroid protection. Ooh, I'm now getting to use some of the shiny. I've got to find 32 gold 1x2 tiles. <laughs> and, well, I don't think I'll bother picking them out. I'll just put them in put them on in the right place because that seems to work. Ah. Mm, this is going to look good. We need to boost the cat game, which reminds me I need to get some uh, Lego Movie 2 Crazy Cat Lady figures. Oh, I did have a spare one of those at one point. <laughs> I think mm. I have her. Uh, I have one of her from the Apocalypse Berg set. Yeah. Thing that seems including good. Jeff. Jeff oh, the Jeff's the cat, isn't he? Yeah, Jeff. You know what? I think oh. I'll nip off briefly and wash my hands because they're they're looking slightly grubby. I'll be back. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now it's uh, yeah. Now it's only me here. Will I take apart the upside down? Yes, I will take apart the upside down. I have no room for it. It's in the uh, it's in the take apart shelf, so temporary storage for until I actually take it apart. Unfortunately, when is the Ninjago District update coming? Why am I reading a question for Cass when she's not here? I don't know. Uh, we'll figure out when she's back. I did hear nice it. Class. All right. Yeah. When is my Ninjago District update coming? Um, well, I've got two more mocks to show you uh, that I really want to show before I do 
the whole update because otherwise there'll be spoilers. Um, so the answer is soonish, but I can't <laughs> I can't say exactly when on a schedule because I'm not sure. But there's also things like uh, more Micropolis to come and Great Ball Contraption and all sorts of good stuff. So I should just say stick around and it will come eventually. Awesome. It's a way to get my watch time up, isn't it? You're now saying a nice classic space. Look at your space collection. Yeah, I, I took out my classic space sets. I had to have something on my stream. Yes. Um, so uh, these are my uh, uh, my classic space sets, which I managed to uh, dig out of my parts collection. So these are all original parts that have been have been these space sets, then taken apart at some point during my childhood and put into the uh, almighty bin of all parts. And then, at, <laughs> and then at some point, I've uh, sorted everything I had in, uh, in that bin into, uh, yeah, sorted them properly. And then I figured, don't I have some space sets in there? And the reason why I hadn't sorted, like, sorted these out earlier is because I've lost instructions for them. So I didn't actually know I, I own these space sets. Uh -huh. uh, but I've been sort of gone into um, Sherlock, uh, Sherlock mode, detecting mode, uh, and searching up like unique pieces and figure out which space sets they belong to and see what I can remember. Mm -hmm. So like the M-Tron uh, piece here, or, or these funky, funky black uh, space panels, the one you have in blue on your uh, space disco, those yeah. corner weird panel things. Yes, yes. Uh, and trying to figure out where all those came from. And um, so these are all eight of my uh, classic space sets, uh, which I grew up with. And not a lot of uh, missing parts. There are some. Uh, but uh, um, yeah. Well, that so, German um, one's particularly good, isn't it? Huh? That German uh, rare one is particularly fun. Yeah. This is cool. I mentioned it earlier, but this is uh, was a uh, exclusive to a German toy store. We think that information I got from Jang on his video on this set. Ah, Jang knows these things. Yeah, because if you search it up and just Google it, uh, you you come across something about it was a McDonald's can Canadian McDonald's giveaway. Seems a bit big for a giveaway from McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. someone mentioned it was possibly more like a raffle thing. Uh, could be. Uh, but ha if it was only that, then there would be no way I would ever have this in my possession because no one in my family has ever been to Canada. So, But Jang did find some information about, yeah, it was a German exclusive in 1985 in a toy store. Wow. And my father has lived in Germany around that time. Ah. So that sounds very... Likely. Yeah. Indeed. It sounds very probable, actually. More probable so, than the Canadian McDonald's oh. raffle, yes. <laughs> well, I've been trying to collect all of the uh, classic space stuff from 1979, you know, the, the mm. very first wave of classic space. And I'm getting there. Um, I kind of think it very much depends on how much money I'm supposed to. I'm prepared to throw at it how quickly I, I'll get these things, but um, there are only three I'm missing out of, I think, 11 sets now. Um, I've got the biggest spaceship, 928, and the other two, 924 and 918, which are awesome. 92, 928 was the one I always wanted as a kid and never had because it was just massive. And that was one of the very first things I, I went and bought when I – Realized I was an AFL, I was like, I must have this spaceship now. Um, but the two the two biggest things I'm missing are the two bases, I think 920 and 926. One's got the rocket launching thing and the other's, I don't know, Alpha Command Base or something, can't remember what the name is, but um right. and then there's the the other thing is the um it's one of the ground stations with the, the little truck that opens up at the back. Um, and they're, they're the three sets that I've been trying to scour eBay for on 
<laughs> so I'm in a reasonable condition, but not bankrupt myself. So I'm still on the trail. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Harry's creation is here. Hello. Where thanks for that? joining the stream. Hello. Cass is building the Lunar Lander, and I finished dismantling some uh, your Excelsior. So now I'm just showcasing my uh, space sets, uh, just uh, bragging away. Martin says he disappears for two minutes, and all some nice space sets come out. Yeah. Well, you snooze, you lose, Martin, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Martin, though that leather walker. Yeah, this walker is awesome. Uh, I think it's. Uh, a, like a rock analyzer, it's supposed to like bend down over and dig down into the earth and pick up rocks and such. All right, <clears throat> that's a very rare ship, yeah. So ugly, it's lovely. Yeah, this this ship here is so funky, but you can also like detach this part here, Ooh. and it has a slight tiny, the most basic, <laughs> basic thing you've ever seen of a um of a little uh, rover car or like. What what it is going to be called, but yeah, that looks like the thing that came with Benny Space Squad. Yeah, just this is more basic. It's it's a two by six with wheels. Nothing wrong with a two by six with wheels. <laughs> no, it's just it's the most. It's so basic, <laughs> but yeah. If they're the end wheels you have, love the wheels you have, as they say. Yeah. So I'm now doing uh, four of the same thing, which is a little bit tedious, but I think I'm doing the um, the, the landing struts next, something like that. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay, so bag four is now, soon? No, no, bag three. Bag three now, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not landing struts, but it's, it's sort of strutty type thing. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. Woodshop teacher have the 918, really wanted the 928. Yeah, I, I'm not that good with the numbers. Well, 918 is the very small single seater ship. And I definitely had that. And I had 924, which is the next one up, which had um, a cargo bay at the back, but just for um, just for a sort of like package of something. And 928 is the biggie, uh -huh. which had space for the buggy at the back and big opening doors at the back. So yes, I'm with you there. Like I said, it was the first, um, the very first thing I had to go and buy when I decided I was going headlong into Appledom. Right. Hmm. Jenny versus here. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hello. And I'm, I'm just bragging with my space sets. And Cass is building the lunar lander. We're celebrating Apollo 50th anniversary. Indeed. That is all. Uh, Jennifer says she got the future on grabber thingy. Yeah, this this is awesome. Uh, I remember playing a lot with this. <laughs> now I have uh, to confess, I'm a bit of a miserable person because I don't like the the green canopies. Oh all. yeah, you keep mentioning that. Ah, the green and green. that grey is oh, a horrible combination. Oh, but it it works so well with the black. <laughs> and see, I don't like black either. It's got to be it's got to be classic light gray, uh, blue, and trans yellow. There's the only colors, only colors for classic Spain. Uh, Martin says, what are your thoughts on the new city space theme, which is not really space? Well, my thoughts are, uh, they are nice, but since you're saying they're not really, well, they are space, but they're not really like a um, fantasy uh, sci-fi space. Uh, they're just real space, basically. Well, they're sort of fantasy as well because it's more Mars, but it's like an immediate reality space sets. Uh, and they're really cool, but uh, I would really like some full imaginary space sets like these ones. They're just full imagination and exploration story and such. Would be uh, would be very nice. What he said, pretty much. And Cass uh, agrees with me because I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on this occasion. <laughs> on occasions. <laughs> Alex Rover Carrier is super nice. What's this flicker handle? Something, cow, something. Uh, Not sure what Marlon is talking about right oh, now. Oh, I know exactly what he's talking about, yes. Um, Hairy Highland Cow is his flicker handle. 
Ah. Or on other social media things, he's often known as HHC Brick for Harry Mullen Cow. Right. Uh, have a look if you're that way inclined with Flickr. Ooh. I'll have to. I'll have to look later. Yeah, too busy. Are you guys missing? Says uh, says Galgate. Yeah, she suddenly jumped up, stared into a dark room, and then ran off. So um, she does mm -hmm. that sometimes. Uh, Something has spooked her. Uh, she was actually just eating some food. Maybe she'll be back. I don't know. She was just hungry then, is what you're saying. Yeah. She got spooked by her own hunger. So like, oh, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can hear the thought processes, can't you? Meow. Meow, meow. Sorry, I'll put, stop pretending to be your cat. It's probably not <laughs> very good. Jennifer says, I always wanted that other future on ship. Yeah, this one. It's cool. Uh, and the monorail. Oh, yeah, I really want the monorail. Don't, oh. don't everyone. Yeah, you see, that's the other thing I have to, had to do fairly recently was jump into monorail. Well, you probably can't see it, but behind me is lots of monorail running around my city. Uh, and I have a custom monorail train, which is currently right over there. The far side, I can't reach it. Got to do something about that. Um, mm. But again, I, I think we were talking about this on your last live stream, weren't we? Um, I quite liked, well, I love the monorail system, but I wasn't mad keen on any of the actual official train sets that were released by Lego. So what I'm doing, uh, I've got one custom monorail for my actual city, and I've just bought these, which is basically the bare chassis and the motor and the um, battery box. And I'm going to make my own classic space monorail in proper colours. So that's light grey, blue and trans yellow. But I haven't really decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. So that's been sitting there taunting me for a while while I decide what I'm going to make. Will be something awesome. Well, I hope so. Galgate is actually abandoning us what? and leaving for the night. Okay. And she'll catch us next time. Thank you very much for your support, as ever, Galagate. You're very much very uh, valuable part of our community. Definitely. Good night, Galagate. Get some, okay. um, do some real life stuff. Enjoy your fabulous holiday. All right. Yeah. Which is still Mar here. Martin is totally agree with you on the exploration theme of uh, space. Uh, but Disney, yeah, I guess as long as we have Star Wars, which is already like a imaginary space theme, you might not get that much classic space or uh, a uh, completely, completely new space theme. Mm. Can you imagine what would happen if Lego announced they were ditching Star Wars finally, and they were going <laughs> to launch their own range? Oh man, there, there's a lot of fans of Star Wars as well. I know. That's why I'm. And they they probably everybody. they'd probably lose the entire Disney license, so they stopped with all the Disney princess stuff and yeah. and every everything else. I hate it when you're right. <laughs> Martin says I'll steer clear from this monorail nonsense. You say that now, but I saw that lust in your eyes at the uh, at the meetup. Deny it at your peril. Jennyverse has a message from Lego Benny. He says he's watching from the space shuttle. That's cool. nice. Awesome. Because I told Lego Benny about the stream earlier on. Hoped he might stop by. Oh, yeah. You did. You, uh, you notified him. I hope there's good reception up in the space station. And the lunar lander has landed, according to uh, Apollo Lego reenactment. And oh, now they're yeah. just staring out the window. Yeah. What, what time was that about? About uh, 20 past nine or something, wasn't it? Uh, not sure. The latest tweet now is uh, 103 hours and 22 minutes. So, <laughs> yes. They uh, took a picture of Earth. Uh, yeah, Galgate got to hang with the hubby. 
Okay. Well, I'm sure you're still hanging with the hubby, so you, you should never begrudge that. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fiddly technic bits now. All right. Martin, Martin says, yeah, Martin has to go and hang with the wife. He says, good night, lovely a brothers and sisters. Good night, Martin. See you soon. <laughs> he says he, he hopes alphabetical order was politically correct. See? When he said brothers and sisters. Ah, that'll do. <laughs> good night, Martin. Nice. Uh, it was nice to have you here. So where are these strutty things going? Uh, just like that, apparently. Mm -hmm. At least it was only four equal of them. Yeah. The uh, carous carousel, the big expert creator carousel, at some point said, make 32 of this piece. I haven't done it right. I then. almost fell out of my chair. I've never seen duplication on that scale level. Uh, that level oh, God. I think it was something like that. They're probably figures actually because they it's quite a it's not just an octagonal thing is it it's lots of panels yeah it was the detailing along the edge of the roof right needed like the same border yeah all right i'll i'll showcase my uh i'll show you a teaser of my next uh mock oh because I just have to have something to do now that most people left <laughs> Galgate and Mara. Yeah. And so <laughs> this piece is part of it. That's all. <laughs> Some wings. Yes. Were they Batman's wings when it when he was a fairy with the, in his pink tutu? <laughs> I Those definitely are, uh, think with a Batman with a pink tutu. <laughs> not making yeah. You finally actually got that uh, sparkly Batman, but everyone's upset that he didn't have that long, lush uh, cape. <laughs> yeah. Is that it then? That's that's the whole teaser, is it? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so disappointing. <laughs> I've actually, yeah. I've, I've actually managed to keep uh, this entire set secret online. Mm -hmm. I haven't shown anything about it. I have said that, told anyone that I'm working on it. No, uh, or no. shown any pictures from it. No. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, it's going to pop up uh, suddenly. <laughs> so the likelihood of you actually pre-revealing anything on this stream was basically nil, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it's very tiny. You'll see it first in my very fully edited uh, masterwork of a video later yes, <laughs> next when? month. When? That's what we want to know. Oh yeah. Maybe I'll put on like a premiere thing. Oh yes, hype, hype, hype. Oh yeah. Got a hype. I've, I've actually, I've shown a teaser picture on Twitter, but that wasn't a picture of uh, the, the, uh, of the, of uh, the mock itself. It was just a picture of trees. A picture of trees. Yeah. <sighs> you know, I hate people who say, I've got a secret, but I'm not <laughs> telling you what it is. That's the best, isn't it? It's like, why did you tell me? You have it's like, yeah, I prefer to be ignorant of the fact that you have a secret that you're not going to tell me. Actually, you asked me first. Did I? Yeah, you asked me if I had something in the works, and I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> But I'm not going to tell. Like me now, I see. <laughs> yeah. Be careful what you wish for, I guess. Mm. If you want to, I have one more set I've actually dug out since when I was digging out the, all my uh, cla uh, classic space. Actually, who was it? Was it um, the woodshop teacher, or was it maybe Martin? I can't remember. Who said that? These aren't really classic space. Uh, yeah. Uh, these it's are all the other right themes. Color. That's what it is. Yeah, but I sort of just call all of those old space themes for the, for the classic space because that's the classic space era era of uh, of space themes. While at the moment we don't have any classic space at all, we have real space and we have Star Wars space. 
Uh, I guess we can forgive you. So that's why I'm calling. Do we have any? Is the chat stopped? Yeah, the chat has uh, died a little bit, Mark and Lamp away. We have some, someone watching at least. So uh, I guess we have to waffle on more. <laughs> I'll keep going whether anybody's watching or not. I'm not proud. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to stick around if nobody's here. But Participants. Uh, we don't have any participants in chat uh, according to the list. So, oh well. <laughs> this is eight. Does that mean eight watching? I don't know. Eight, eight is watching, but then you can also open the list of participants, and that's the uh, people that oh, chat. Right. They're just lurking then. That's fine. Yeah. Lurkers are welcome. <laughs> no worries. But um, yeah, I had some other. Um, when I was looking for uh, for which space, which sets I had in my parts collection, I didn't find only space themes. Oh yeah, I found you. some uh, some pirate stuff, uh, some castle stuff, and some western stuff, wild west stuff. Cool. Uh, and I haven't completely rebuilt those sets, but I have almost completed uh, this pirate set here, which uh -huh. is quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, all I'm actually missing is this guy's head and uh, hat. Off with his head. Off with his head. He's waving around his weapons like a headless chicken at moments. Mm. And the chest is filled with old classic gold coins. Oh, nice. Do you want to know old classic gold coins? Let's have a look. I really like them, but the the coins aren't in production at all. Not the old one and not the new one either. There they are. Oh, yeah. nice. Very nice. Uh, uh, yeah, they're shiny. Uh, good mm. quality. I was, I, I was looking at like, oh, I want a lot of those, but they they cost like, uh, uh, what would be a half a pound each. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. That sounds expensive. The Woodshop teacher says, I agree, those are all classic Lego space sets from before 1995. Yeah, that's basically what I'm meaning when I say classic space is uh, all, all the old space themes. You're all ganging up on me now. <laughs> can you guys name all of the themes here? You probably can, can't you? Uh, no. I'll probably forget some. <laughs> Well, there's well, that uh, all the themes I have here. I mean, so, yeah. There's that one, and then there's the other one, and then there's that other thing. And oh yeah, yeah. I thought I've done them all when I did that uh, the recolor of Sister Sweet Mayhem Sister Starship. But then there's like, oh yeah, I've got Blacktron, and I've got this one, and this one. They had a lot of different space themes in that age. You know what I really want to do, and that's a recolor of the Party Boss. Oh yeah. Um. That would be fabulous in, in blue, grey, and trans yellow. The only problem is you can't get that massive canopy piece in trans yellow. Yeah. It does not exist. However, the polish doesn't come in. Um, can't remember. Not not very exciting, I think, from memory. Um, you could look it up if you want to. <laughs> um, but one thing I did notice, I um, I've heard online that you can. You can actually dye transparent, transclear elements yellow. Oh yeah, yeah. You can use turmeric. You boil them in turmeric for a bit, and I'm thinking it would be worth the sacrifice of one of those canopies briefly to see oh, if it, a recolor works. For... It does come in clear. Yeah, it comes in clear, but but not but not trans yellow. Yeah. So. So you yeah, could theoretically do, do a recolor of it. Yeah, it, it comes really. in the UCS slave one. Mm. Well, in my world, it comes from Bricklink, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see the clear That's one. Interesting, interesting possibility, eh? It's not too bad. Not a lot of people are selling it, but it's from five to uh, forty-five pounds. 
Five to forty-five pounds. Yeah, don't buy it from Portugal. Right. Okay. You can get it from Norway for ten pounds. Oh, is that from your parts collection? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what you meant. Okay. Not entirely. Yeah, there's not a lot of people selling it, obviously, because you need to part it out from the UCS slave one. Mm. <laughs> pirates yeah. in space. Space pirates. Yeah, that was basically the Firefly show, wasn't it? Or was that more like Wild West in space? Mm, I don't know. Space pirates. How about um, uh, treasure, the, the Treasure Planet movie? That was great. It was an amazing animated movie. Underrated, I think. One thing I'm not sure about is the, the difference in colour here between the, the lovely shiny silver for the struts and then the end has gone to pearl silver. Huh. It's a bit disappointing, but anyway, we'll see. Maybe it's uh, based on reality. Mm, possibly. That would be novel, wouldn't it? I don't know why they're telling me to only make three of these, because surely there's four legs. Anyway. Uh, yeah. We shall find out why at some point. You can get it at the Lego Bricks and Pieces, says Mock Brick. Possibly the canopy he's talking about, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, that's a thought. I must admit, I keep forgetting that, that Bricks and Pieces is a thing. Yeah. Because quite often when I look for stuff, uh, they just haven't had what I wanted, so I've kind of, you know, oh. Whatever, I can't be bothered. But, and often also, it's more expensive than actually Bricklink or whatever. But occasionally you, you want something, you look for it, and it's, it's so much cheaper on bricks and pieces. And you think, wow, um, I really must try and remember that a bit more often. So, yeah, that's a good call. Lady Brick Skater is here. Hello, welcome to our stream. Hello, Hello Lady Brick Skater. Cass is building the Lunar Lander, and I'm showcasing my classic space collection yes. but uh, as a woodshop teacher it's not true classics <laughs> so yes. the true classics are definitely the three blue spaceships and those other that are built with the old light gray pieces yes. actually this one here is a classic space set yes it's from the I classic have, space theme i have many of those yeah <laughs> three anyway and this is probably the one that Benny's Space Squad uh, scooter thing is based on. Yes, almost certainly. Definitely. Uh, now, I can't remember what this thing is from. It's not Future, huh? it's something else. No, I can't remember either. Michael Eiffel says the infamous Portugal Bricklink store. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. It has a lot of inventory, but insane prices on everything. Uh, how mm -hmm. is everything doing and what have I missed, says Lady Brick Skater? Uh, you missed me unwinding or basically taking apart the uh, Brick Cells here. And uh, now we're just waffling on and you missed Kaz building some Lunar Lander. Yeah, so not a lot really. <laughs> In all honesty. Data Brick Skater says she had that set as a kid. Yeah, you mean this tiny uh, scooter from Classic Space? Yeah. Which your teacher says exactly. Yeah. I can't remember right now. Who can mention, Who can say where this set is from? Which theme is know. this? I don't know. He has a blue, it's a blue spaceman. Must be a little I'm, bit older because the blue ones didn't come out for a few years, did they? No. And I, when I found him in my in my in uh, in my bin of minifigures, I was so happy to see how yeah. well how well that uh, was preserved. That print, real Benny. Yeah. The the worrying thing is he's got no gloves on though. <laughs> yeah, but that's fine. He's in his uh, spaceship. He oh. doesn't have a visor or a, or a, uh, a fine, oxygen then. tank either. Ah, fair enough. <laughs> I was getting worried. I think I don't. I'm not entirely sure if this is the earliest version or a slight later version of the helmet. I think this one might be the uh, strengthened helmet. Yeah. So I don't have the first version of it. 
Well, it's less likely to break, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're fairly well. Well, that's that doesn't look that good. A black space uh, pat, uh, classic that's space pattern. I don't know what that other one was from. Have you had a look on Britlink? Mm. Well, I, I I just can't remember. I have it written down somewhere which sets these are because I of course to build them I had to look at all the parts lists. Sure. Um, I can I, I have it right here on my computer. Um. Hmm. Nope, not hardly sure. I didn't write the name, I just have a bunch of numbers, so now I have to check the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit tedious. Well, and I, I don't have much else to do. Well, oh, blue time. spaceman. There we go. Okay, I, I I wrote a note that this set this the one that uses my blue spaceman. Uh -huh. I'm not sure about these legs. They just look a bit a bit rubbish at the moment. And there's only three of them. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Ah, we're making the fourth one now. Oh, nice. Oh, it might slightly more special. Yeah, it's the one with the camera on the... Um... Ah, of course. Oh, no, the plaque. There's a plaque on the side. Oh, it? yeah, the plaque, yeah. The, the, plaque, uh, the, the Explored in Peace thing. Should be the wrong... It's the wrong colour, they reckon. We come in peace for all mankind. Yeah. Lady Brick Skater says the earlier had a very thin chin strap. Yeah, that's why they broke so much and why Benny was known as uh, <laughs> the one with uh, the broken helmet. The chinless wonder. The woodshop teacher says the trans yellow round brick needs to be trans green. This is true. Oh yeah, yeah this on uh, my on my tiny scooter. Mm. Yeah, probably I have have substituted a, a few of the parts that I couldn't find, unfortunately. Oh, but you're on the aficionados are out now and they'll know. Yeah. Had a few fair of those chin straps break on me, says lady. That's too bad. They uh, they had a tendency to snap when playing with them. Yeah, Brick Twenty Five is here. Hello, thanks for joining our uh, stream. Good evening, Brick Twenty Five. You might get the Saturn Five for his birthday. He's very excited. Uh, that's very understandable. It's an awesome set. Yeah, I think I don't have it the, myself. But... You were in Jacob's stream last night, weren't you? Watching him build that. Oh that's yeah, crazy. that's true. It's a very cool set indeed. The fourth one is slightly different, says Michael Seifel. Say, yeah, he's talking about your strap. Yeah. yeah. Lego Room is here. Hello, Mark. Welcome. Hey, Thanks Mark. for joining us. I'm just showcasing some uh, some uh, classic space sets, which uh, which Woodshop teacher is enjoying, telling me are not classic space. And uh, Cass is building the Lunar Lander. Well, which will be a classic set. I Definitely a classic space as well, don't forget. Yeah. It's not just Woodshop Teacher. Uh, and I looked it up. I actually found uh, found this out now. This thing is oh, called yeah. the Starfire. Okay. Awesome name for a um, slightly mediocre build, I think, because it's <laughs> so it doesn't have it doesn't have the colors to be called the Starfire. So fire, F I R E. Yes. Not no not fighters. The Starfire. Wow. Yeah, the yeah, Starfire so one. And it is from Classic Space this as well. It's in the Classic Space theme according to Bricklink. What year? Oh, what year are we at now? This is from 86. Okay. So yeah, a little bit later as I say with the blue guy. Yeah. Benny. Oh dear. I've got to concentrate now because look, it says there's there's the right and the wrong way to do something. Are you doing it the wrong way? I don't know, I haven't tried any of it yet. <laughs> oh yeah, don't do it like that, do it like this. Yeah. So that very nice. Those are some lovely looking sets as Lego Room. Yeah, they are they are great. 
So those are classic space. Uh, there's two future onsets. Uh, here's the original Space Police set. Great color combination with blue and black. Can never go wrong with that. Um, wondering if I'm missing a Weiser. Yeah, I think I'm missing a red Weiser for uh, the original sp Space Police guy here. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. What it was saying was there are two different knobbly bits here that you could possibly plug that it to. into. And it needs to go into the gray one at the back, not the red, uh, the black one. Because ah. I'm presuming the black one's going to be used for something else. You can see what. 86, then it is a classic, says Woodshop Teacher. I can see what my friend Ben was talking about needing two hands to do these uh, struts. <laughs> Yeah, holding it and attaching it at the same time, yeah. Mm. Is that a Pac-Man t-shirt? Me? No. The Someone asked if that was a Pac-Man t-shirt up there. Um, I'm not sure who oh, you're... The Vegas um, mat. Oh, <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's a Pac-Man blanket, yes. I didn't understand where Pac-Man came from. There's no red, uh, no yellow circles anywhere. Or anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I can turn off uh, Vegas. Uh, Vegas. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's a blanket for my cat. She sleeps there sometimes. I'm not sure where she went now. Can't Don't see her up. anywhere. Look, I've got feet. Woo! Ooh, -hoo, nice. Now you can put it on the uh, thing. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to yet because there's more uh, bits to put on. Uh -huh. More struts so that the feet don't collapse. Good idea. Michael Eiffel. Michael's Eiffel did a classic space display at the show last weekend. All of the sets were built into one of their back of the box alternative builds. That sounds amazing. Oh, that's really sounds cool. Great. Yeah. How many different uh, sets were, uh, were there? You had to uh, alternate it. And those, that's not, well, those sets weren't the largest, but the, the alternative builds never had the instructions for them, did they? No. You, so you sort of just have to build from the the pictures. Yeah. That's, a that's impressive. I've been following, um, oh, that guy on Twitter, is it, who uh, always posts about Batman stuff. I think uh, he, uh, he were trying fly? to recreate, uh, let them fly. Let them fly, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was trying to recreate some sort of Batman set from the back of the box of some other Batman set. Mm. And we were trying to get in touch with someone who built it and such because he, there were some parts he really didn't understand how how were built. That so was very interesting mm. to see. Well, as you know, recently I've seen quite a lot of the classic space um, sets at, at the show I went to at Mowbray. Um, and I do, I do enjoy seeing them. And lots of people won't have seen them for many years, and they'll probably go, "Ooh, look at look at that!" But when all is said and done, they are just builds of an official set. And and something like that to actually build the alternate build would be something completely amazing because I don't think many people would have seen that ever, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I should suggest it to the guys that own the classic space set. Wait for the yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> or how some has built, like the, uh, like, yeah, like you did, like the modernization of uh, classic space sets. Yeah. Those are all great as well. Yeah. Jenny Ware says she wanted this, the space police ship with the cage on the back. Are you talking about this specifically? Or, or this, this isn't actually any theme. Uh, uh, but you might be talking about this if this is the one with the cage on the back or maybe you're talking about some set that isn't here at all but this one is quite cool and has a cool minifigure who it doesn't have the space logo so it has a space police 2 printing mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure how in focus this is but and it has what i was calling pauldrons but it's called something else uh those shoulder things Essentially, oh, this guy is a lieutenant, I think, or a sergeant. Are they, are they like pommely, uh, sort of pommel 
frilly bits. They're epaulets. Yeah, epaulets, right? Yeah, that's what it was. And I, I had so much trouble figuring out where that was because I was so sure it was part of one of the pirate sets. Right. Because, uh, hmm? We have a ladder. So, oh, nice. They can get out. Now they can uh, get out of something. You have to build the thing they're getting out of. Yeah, that's coming very soon. Lego Room is asking if there's a threshold for being a classic. Is it the 80s? Well, I think it's just our, our own prejudices, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the honest it, answer. I mean, I don't know what it should it, be. It basically depends on which uh, age group you're asking. Yes, probably. For me, classic space actually growing up was none of these. It was Spirius. Was it? Which was like from 94, which is way too late, I guess. <laughs> mm, way too late. Whereas my 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 uh, kind of impressionable self was, oh my God, Lego are doing space stuff. <laughs> and bearing in mind, this was only 10 years after the moon landing. So, you know, my childhood was still... I mean, they stopped going to the moon in, in 1972, but by 1979, I certainly was still very aware of all sorts of space stuff and what was going on, possibly because, you know, I've got a father who's interested in that kind of thing. Um, but it was still quite in the forefront of people's thinking that we'd actually been to the moon and, you know, it was a cool thing to have. Wow. This is really stiff. Yeah. Michael, uh, Michael Seifel displayed around 25 sets. That's yeah, awesome. That's photos or videos Michael Seifel. That would be fabulous to have a look at. Yeah. Do you have a video? I'll check out your channel uh, for please, that. Please share with us if you do have video of it. Made an alternate build of the exosuit. Oh, yeah, that Lego Ideas set. Hmm. Oh, that's great. Cool. Uh, Jenny, we were talking about uh, when she said the police, space police with the cage on the back, we were talking about the 6781 SP Striker, which is uh, from the original space police series. Uh -huh. I searched it up now, and uh, it, yeah, it looked really cool. It had like a laser grid cage on the back. Uh -huh. We also have a rocket booster underneath. Oh, yeah, which is basically a crow's nest from the uh, early uh, pirates. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's a rocket. <laughs> Definitely a rocket. Oh, another empty thing. And then an almost empty things, just a few bits to go. And then it's bag four. Woohoo! We've still got people watching. Nine. That's, that's yeah, we have some. Not bad at all. Jennifer's mentioned, or maybe the smaller one, 6886, which is the Galactic Peacekeeper, which also has like a cage on the laser grid cage on the back. Mm. It seems like they both have a cage. Fair enough. Those are cool. More bits for the guess the leftovers, which will be very easy because of all the gold pieces. <laughs> I'm not really sure why I'm bothering at all. I have one for tomorrow, which I forgot to do uh, last Sunday. Okay. People who watch my stream might have might know which uh, set that is. If they didn't, then uh, I think it's going to be really difficult to guess. Uh, I watched the stream and I can't remember. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I was busy looking at the chat. That's what it was. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You were super busy looking at chat, weren't you? Yeah. Not busy building your own stuff at all. No. Legoro says, good point, depends on your generation. Yeah, which uh, which is classic for you, is uh, classic for other, uh, not classic for other people, yeah. Nope. There's a lot of videos on it on my channel. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at that. That sounds amazing. 25 alternate classic space sets. Mm, definitely. Did you do any alternate of... Is, is it basically only from the classic space theme or are like any classic space sets? Uh, did you do any alternates of, like, of Spirius, which is my favorite, which is the ones I grew up with? <laughs> Maybe not. Let me interrupt you for a minute. Ta -da! There we go. It's on the moon. The moon. Right. Let me see. 
It currently looks like the uh, top module has already uh, taken off. It does. Abandoned, they have. <laughs> right. Now, the problem with uh, bag four is there's not just two thingies, there's three. Ah. But Ooh. some of them are quite large, so hopefully it won't take too long. What's the time? Half ten. Uh, well, yes, okay. I should crack on as much as possible. Yeah. You have half an hour to reach uh, three hours. Yeah, that's mm, might be a bit longer than that, but we'll see. <laughs> Got the spaceman coming out. Shall I figure out how long you will take to build this set based on your uh, one uh, Lego briquettes uh, that you built on stream? <laughs> yeah, go on then, do that. <laughs> All right, so so that's the Easter briquettes, right? Mm. So this is the peril, the perils of taking one data point and extrapolating. <laughs> yes. There's no danger in that. Come on. I'll just call you know, it. When, when searching brickheads on Bricklink, you find three brickheads, and then you have to click the brickheads theme, and then um, you find all of them. Yes, it was the Easter bunny. The bunny. No, wasn't it the Easter chip? Uh, oh. The yellow one? Yes, yeah, sorry, it was the yellow one, yeah. No. I just thought Easter and then couldn't remember, so I guess it's bunny. I think the hardest thing with this is figuring out exactly which pieces are in which bit. <laughs> All right, let's click live streams. There we go. It took you 23 minutes to build the Easter chick. Yes. And it was 120 parts. OK. Don't forget, it was my very first live stream. I was I had no wingman and I was trying to look at the chat as well. So be nice to me. There are no excuses in the world of statistics. You're a very hard man. My keyboard stopped working, so I can't find my calculator. Well that's that that'll beat you for being nasty to me. <laughs> oh. All right. Phone is I have a calculator there as well. <laughs> Looking on the phone. God. Is this your massive spreadsheet of truth? No, it's just dividing two numbers. Oh, okay. Five, you built with five pieces a minute. Five pieces a minute is shocking. Yeah. Might be, might be down to five pieces a minute for this if I can't find what I'm looking for. <laughs> there we go. It has... Oh, come on. Inventory in progress? Bricklink doesn't have an inventory yet. What? Oh, you have a number of pieces? Yeah. Uh, 10,087, says the box. 10,000 pieces? Sorry. You built it quite fast then. <laughs> One thousand and eighty-seven. I was thinking ten, eight, seven. Sorry, ten, eight, seven pieces. <laughs> I'm super. And eighty-seven. All right. You'll spend three and a half hours on this set. Well, okay. That's, that, that's about that, what we're that's at. That's an hour more. Yeah, it seems about right, actually. <laughs> it's not unreasonable. And I've got a wingman this time. <laughs> Later, Brick Skater says, only in a steampunk pirate set could it be a crow's nest at the rocket. <laughs> steampunk yeah. pirate. Yeah, yeah, be... oh, yeah, because it's a black crow's nest. Yeah, I need steampunk. It could be the black bird from um, from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That's black. Almost all the way is black. Jenny Verse needs to do a Lego video or two, she says. Got so many squirreled away, mostly food related. Got so many sets squirreled away. Food related sets are the best, as mm. long as the cheese is correctly on the burger. Which it is now. Which it is now, that's great. I know what your barbs are all about. <laughs> Looks like a fantastic set, much bigger than I realized, says Lego Room. Yeah, the loot. Yeah, yeah. Amazingly uh, put together. 
Food related Lego. Mm. Now you're making me feel hungry. It's the earlier classic space, 1979 to 1984, with some Benny space squads worked in as well, <laughs> says Michael Zafel into his display. That's great. Excellent. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. It sounds really good. Lego Room says he's never eaten any Lego sets, so it could be quite tasty. He doesn't know. Ask Vega. She's eaten some, hasn't she? <laughs> she chomped on some, yeah. Jennifer says cake, ice cream shop, burger stand on fire, outdoor barbecue on fire. I like the burger stand on fire because it has uh, cheese, the cheese correctly on the burger. <laughs> That's the only reason you're prepared to say you like it, is it? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the, the rest. It's just the burger part. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you liked it because the cheese was nicely melted. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> The workshop teacher, the great spreadsheet of truth. Yeah, well, we started one right now for CAS, basically. Oh, God. Okay. We'll, uh, you'll be in competition with uh, Jacob now. We'll, uh, I'll uh, have, like, comparison tables to see who, who, who can talk the most and build the most at the same time. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, Jacob's a pro now. He's been he's been doing it for some time, hasn't he? I think he's getting yeah. quite I've been thinking about new stats to publish about uh, about it. Uh, I want to make it like a table to show how fast he builds compares to how big the sets are, because I think it builds faster the bigger a set is. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, he he focuses more on to get it done because. Uh, he, he can't have too many live streams for a set. He doesn't want to spend his whole life live streaming building sets. <laughs> now don't that get too cheesy, says Good Shop. <laughs> don't get too cheesy. Can never be too cheesy. You can never have enough cheese. Oh, I could just eat grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> just eat, just take a block of cheese and microwave it. It's, uh, that's enough. <laughs> Eat it with a spoon. Doesn't work out very well. <laughs> it depends on the starts, cheese. It starts cooling and then it goes very stringy and sticks to everything. <laughs> it's almost need like, like I tried it. Need like nacho cheese, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think the stickers inside the lem are a little bit more uh, wobbly, but no, that's fine. Right. Nobody's going to see. I have, of course, uh, all. Well, Julian says, I think I have to go to sleep. Okay. You don't have to think about it. You can just uh, not go to sleep. Uh, don't worry about it. Just stay here and watch. There's, is this, is this I already fell asleep play? twice. Oh, that's why it was so quiet from you. It's me because there's no games to play. That's all. Yeah, there's no games. He can't. <laughs> Julian can't steal any bricks from people, can't challenge them. No. I'm getting a bit parched. I need a bit more water. I finished my lemonade, unfortunately. Mm. So when are you going to start your build? Mm? Are you going to start your build, did you say, or not? Oh, um, <laughs> bricks, says Julie. I've, um, I have, uh, as I said, I've been quiet about my next mock, but I have been starting showing things about my next mock after that one. Uh, I showed some pictures, some renders on Twitter about it, which was that treasure chest. Uh, uh, no, so. I meant tonight. Are you not going to build something? Oh, um, no, I've just been waffling, as you would say. Waffling's fine. Um, I do have some more sets. Well, as I said, I found Silent Mary, but I was thinking building that tomorrow. Yeah, uh, that's a large start to be starting at this, large set to be starting at this time of night, really. Yeah, I could maybe get like the mythical creatures and build that or or something. Yeah. Uh, but, um, maybe. I'm just scowling at the instructions. And then I'm groveling in the pot for some bits. Nice. Yeah. Oh, you can carry on. Really? 
I'm not really contributing much visually, am I? <laughs> well, not now Vegas run off, no. No. All right, yeah. <laughs> Jenny Rose has to uh, go to sleep as well. Good luck with the rest of the build, she says. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and have a good night's sleep. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be uh, done in not too long. So do we know when, when and if Greg is supposed to be live streaming tomorrow? Does anybody know? GJ Bricks? Because I'm sure I heard rumours that, that he was going to do something with Document Brick tomorrow, but I don't know any more details at this point. I guess we can check it to see if he's scheduled something. It doesn't look like it. No, I, he hadn't when we started, certainly, so. No. It's not scheduled anything. Maybe they're just going to wing it. Which is fine. Yeah. I think also Mike's a bit busy with the family at this minute, so being summer and everything. Yeah. Who is TJ Bricks? Says so uh -huh. Julian's Brick City. GJ Bricks is uh, another YouTuber who also does uh, live streams and other uh, other other things on his channel. I'm surprised you haven't heard of him already, but yeah, he's a good good chap. Yeah, check him out. Unless he was being facetious and knows exactly who he is. <laughs> Maybe. GJ streaming with Doctor McBrick tomorrow evening, Oz time. Yeah, so that'll be tomorrow morning. Like the Wizard of Oz time? That's Kansas time, isn't it? <laughs> boom, boom. Julius Brick City says GJ Brick was his first subscriber. You Ooh. should know him by now, then. You're kind of lacking. Yeah. You've got to give as well as take, you know. If someone subs to you, you've got to go and have a look at theirs. TJ no. makes an appearance on the shout out live stream every now and then. What's the shout out live stream? Not entirely sure. And why haven't I had a shout out yet? <laughs> Need more shout out. There's no better place than home, says Julian. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Kansas Wizard of Austin image. <laughs> How's Julian? Now, let me think. The Banana Berman live stream. Yeah, apparently does shout out live streams. Ah, the Banana Berman. He's been doing, well, it seems like he, all he's been doing recently is live streaming some of his old videos over and over. Presumably to get his watch time up. I don't know. Because, ah. you know, you know that thing he did, um, he went to Romania and filmed the big spiral train thing in the shop. Do you remember that? I don't think I've seen anything from him. Ah, you must have a look if you like Lego trains. Yeah. Banana boom and or something. I can't remember how it's spelled. But, I mean, you know, he's got plenty of interesting videos to watch. But I went and looked at his stream earlier. And he was live streaming some of his content that had been up as normal videos. So I don't know what's going on there. I think he was complaining a bit that his watch time was low and needed to up that a little bit. Huh. That's personally, a weird way of doing it. I'm not convinced that that's necessarily the way to do it. No. Lego Room says he gained 12 subs today from Reddit. That's awesome. Did someone share your um, your hot <laughs> book or did you share it yourself? Who was that? Lego Room. Oh, excellent. Yeah. I've never really, really got into Reddit either as a, a you know a poster or a, a reader, if I'm honest. Don't know what. To... I, I stop by from time to time. It's a very difficult place to uh, to promote, as you really shouldn't promote yourself there. Well, that's what I've heard, and, and I think JC said the same when he first started. He, he kept getting slapped because he was promoting himself and not supposed yeah. to. And they, they, they have some um, some rules that are um, like global wide on uh, on Reddit. Is uh, if you um, any video you share is counted towards uh, uh, 
counting towards your your spam rating basically okay and uh, if if your posts are more than 20 percent self-promotion videos which any of it uh, self-promotion posts then your account is flagged as a spam account and you're then no longer allowed to post anything so there's a there's a fine line between how you're supposed to share any content sounds more probably worth it i'm honest yeah fine set of rules and all that stuff. Well, I can appreciate why they do it, but on the other hand, it doesn't sound like you end up with much content at all if you enforce that too hard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So even if you share, so if I shared, say, one of your videos, that would be counted as my spam, would it? It depends. If you're making a post about my video, yes. Or basically a post that is directly a link. But if you mention my video in a comment, it, it's not the same thing. Ah, uh, so so many rules you don't know what you've done wrong. Yeah, and you can't see your spam percentage. You just suddenly get like a moderation email saying your post was removed. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> Reddit has rules. More <laughs> uh, it's worth. They try to have some rules, yeah. Lego Room says he posted a picture of his uh, moth. Moth, 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 <laughs> and a vid link in the comments. Didn't expect anything, but it got six hundred views in a few hours. Yeah, that's basically how how you should do it. You should post some pictures or something, and then you link in comments and saying, "Hey, I made a video about it as well." That's mm -hmm. taking more uh, people are more inclined to like that than uh, if you post uh, direct video links in uh, your post. Okay. And, uh, and that's great, Lego Room. That you really don't know about until. So, a three days of use from. That's awesome, Lego Room. I seem to be getting about uh, maybe 100 views a day. Most of them on my. Um, on my. Uh, on that sword I built, the speed, speed built sword. That has the most views on my channel. Oh yeah, that was um, was that the sword from um, uh, Minecraft? From Zelda, yeah. the master oh, from Zelda. Zelda was it not? Yeah. I don't like the ones they got in Minecraft as well. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm looking for the right uh, piece. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> oh, makes sense. Um, yeah, that video it, it's very searchable because very. A lot of people apparently want uh, Zelda, uh, Zelda Lego. So mm -hmm. just searching Zelda Lego, I, my videos is one of the few you find, sort of. I think. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing. You've got to try and find something unique that hardly anybody else has done, haven't you? Maybe. To get good Google juice, anyway. <laughs> Very old thing, Reddit is. Sometimes my posts get no views as Lego Room. Yeah, it's about time of day and who sees, who spots it first. And uh, if people are only browsing the top posts, then uh, your post isn't going to get any view when your post is only on the new posts. So someone has to go into and check out all the new posts and then get that voted up to the top post. And yeah, yeah it's. That's crazy. Moth mock, like a massive insect. Yeah, like uh, Mothra from uh, from the uh, the Japanese kaiju movies. Yes. The moth is loose. Sounds terrifying. Lego Room got uh, the problem was he got lots of Reddit messages which he couldn't keep up with. Oh well, it's not the worst problem to have if uh, a lot of people liked your stuff. Mm -hmm. If what, what I'm talking if. Since because a lot of people liked your stuff, of course they liked your stuff. Oh God, no! I hate it when they say make two of these, but they don't tell you right at the beginning. Oh yeah, sometimes it's hard to spot. Or well, they did tell me right at the beginning, but like I said, <laughs> oh yeah, that's boring. Yeah, you could have been searching for twice the amount of pieces. <laughs> Sometimes so you're, you're you're supposed to build multiple of a set of uh, with a set of pieces you all they already told you to get. So sometimes you're supposed to get all the pieces at once and then build build multiple of them. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't seem to be much consistency really, does there? About what? No. 
so anyway talk amongst yourselves <laughs> while i go back to three or four pages and find out what i'm supposed to be doing i suppose it, i should have clocked it when i realized that there were two sets of stickers but never mind <laughs> oh yeah yeah sometimes you sort of uh, uh, you know you sort of realize that it's multiples that you should be building but yeah not always Lady Brickskater is checking her, her statistics on her channel. Surprisingly, I hope all her favorite video has highest view time. That's cool. Which one is your favorite? The build compare video. Ah, nice. Oh, did you see um, Beyond the Bricks video released today about their stats? I saw they released it, but I didn't check it out. It was quite, quite interesting. I mean, you know, I'm nowhere near monetization, and I'm not convinced I want to monetize even if I am. But um, some of the statistical tabs on YouTube are pretty well, you probably understand them because you're a stats nerd. But half the time I look at them and go, I haven't got a scooby about what, what really this means. So it was good that um, it was basically John who was going through things, um, explaining a little bit more about exactly what was what. Uh, right. and what the tabs meant and you know the kind of stats that they've got so it's quite interesting yeah it's cool of them to release a video about that stuff yeah being a little I, transparent oh i got the wrong sticker and then um, right at the end it was like you know oh by the way we earn this much of it, but, but we do have lots of expenses <laughs> yeah which is fair enough i mean some people you know they sit in there third bedroom or whatever making videos like me they don't really apart from buying lego which is not inconsiderable they don't have any particular other expenses but you know john and josh are traveling all over the shop yeah all over the place all the time yeah to bring us content which obviously costs them a whole heap more money than um you know just sitting in your bedroom and building sets and chatting with your chums Hey, Dragon Chick is here. Welcome back. I think you were in the beginning as well. Hello. Thanks for uh, joining us again. Yep. Poor Kaz, bad instructions again, says the woodshop. Uh, I'm normally pretty good uh, at spotting it, but I, A, I'm possibly getting a bit tired, and B, uh, I'm chatting and doing other things as well. So it's not like I'm. Mega Room's got to go. Okay. Thanks, thanks as always you. for hosting. He says good night, everyone. Yeah, good night, leg room. Uh, nice having you here. Yep. Till next time, night. Yeah. Jeez. This has been a really long stream, but I like it. Says Dragon Chick. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it, it's long when you have to build a three-hour set. I'll take four. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still. I think I'm still on course for three and a half. Aren't I? I don't know. Jordan's Brick City says, I think they did that because Jake's very British reviews did that and it was a very big boost for his channel. Huh? So he, he released some statistics as well. Ah, okay. He's in that ah, maybe. Movie, but I haven't really watched much. I mean, I know of him, but I don't I know haven't if I'm watched him. I don't know if I'm that bothered, if I'm honest. He did a thing about getting cheap Lego, you know, how to get cheap Lego. Right. Um, how to get a, a really expensive set for not much money and half the thing he was saying was like well if you don't want the minifigs then you know you can you can brick link it together i'm thinking yeah but if you do want the minifigs you haven't actually told us how to get the thing cheap you know and it was all these yeah, right. that he was cutting that i was thinking well it's all a bit sort of clickbaity really maybe that was just my opinion but <laughs> Having watched that, I thought, well, you know, I'm that bothered, really. Depends on what you want with the sets, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some sets, I'm, I'm absolutely not bothered about the minifigs at all. Well, then they tend to be the sets that I usually just bought for parts anyway. Yeah. Rather than a set that I really, really want that's fiendishly expensive. In which case, I would want the minifigs, you know? So... Oh, yeah. It's not only your opinion, says Julian. Ah, interesting. So uh, possibly some more things that. Yeah. 
uh, I have a hard enough time to keeping up with all the ones I have subscribed to. And it's like, oh man, this is a great Lego YouTuber. And then I find them, it's like, but I don't, I can't subscribe to everyone. I can't watch it all. No, this is true. And I must confess, you know, I subscribe to some people, and I think, well, if I if I've skipped maybe their last half a dozen uploads because I'm not bothered, I'm thinking, actually, do I still need to be subscribed to them? Because the likelihood of them making something all of a sudden. Uh, a little bit later yeah. is, is, is a bit less but I don't know I, I give people a reasonable chance it's not necessarily about the frequency of your uploads either but there are one or two people that I'm thinking you've just made that video for getting views and to be honest I'm really not interested in that kind of video yeah. I've been trying to um, like there's a lot of people making very good reviews of sets and such but I'm not that interested in reviews, so I've try been trying to trim down and find ones who uh, who mostly do unique stuff like mocks and such. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I realize I say that uh, while I while I myself don't make that much unique stuff. <laughs> I make my speed build videos, which of official sets, which a lot of other people are doing. Uh, but that's what I'm enjoying, and if people enjoy watching those, that's that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and if you're not just for the, vi the for the views um that's also fine you know yeah i mean if you're clearly wanting to just get monetized then that's going to be an issue for you but yeah yeah that's uh not going to happen at, at first even if i reached a thousand subscribers uh, i would still have a ways off to get any watch time yeah and i, I to reach um, that. you know when you're only when you tend to, you do. I do three videos a week on average, but most of them are less, or only just over a minute long. So that's an awful lot of subscribers I'm going to need. Yeah, to get that's true. Close to watch time, and I was talking a little bit about this last night in Jacob's stream as well. And I'm not actually convinced I really want to monetize, if I'm honest, when the time comes, if the time comes, because it doesn't really matter in the beginning either, because. Like immediately when you reach thousand subscribers and monetize, then at that point you're just getting small amounts. Maybe if you then at some point reach a threshold of a lot of subscribers, you mm. know. Uh, but that takes a lot of work. It does, and I, and then you end up on the treadmill. Yeah. Turn it out. I've, I must do this video, and I must make it get views. I mean. Somebody said yeah. today, oh, I don't make those X kind of videos anymore because people don't like them as much as the other stuff I do, although I really like making those videos. I'm like, well, okay, if you're doing it for the money, which you clearly are, if that's your attitude, um, fine. But sooner or later, you're going to go, actually, why am I doing this? And if it's now a job and you're not enjoying it anymore, um, and you're relying on that as an income. Okay, not many people do that, get that big on YouTube, but people, some people do. Um, but it's then a case of you're then you're then stuck in a trap if you have got yourself into that scenario. If you're now bored to tears with doing the things that you need to do to earn money, then your video quality is inevitably going to slump because yeah. you can't be bothered with it. Or, you know, you're having to be bothered with it, and that's the whole point, rather than doing it because you love doing it. Um, and, and it's going to show, no matter how hard you try, and then you're on the treadmill, and it just gets worse and worse. So I'd, I'd rather just not be on the treadmill, <laughs> personally. Yeah. And whilst having a little bit of pin money for, you know, buying sets would be lovely, um, you've got to be earning hundred odd pounds a month more than that just to even make make it worthwhile for that kind of scenario and that's a lot of that's a lot of views and a lot of subscribers and you can't take your foot off the gas you've just got to be at it all the time yeah it'll become a full-time job at that point so mm. uh, it takes uh it takes special care and it takes uh like it takes the dedication for people who wants to do that. 
Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Julian says, that's why I don't upload much. He doesn't want to bore you. Kaz? <laughs> Specifically. <I'm good> at... <laughs> <laughs> the best videos are the videos where the maker has fun making that video and shows that fun in the video. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I can agree with, I can agree with that. Um, and the ones having fun in my videos, it's this uh, thing with the tail over here. <laughs> yeah, she. while you were talking, she was stealing your attention, the, the attention away from you. Yeah, I did. While walking around. I didn't like to mention it, but because <laughs> as soon as I speak, she's off camera then, so I wanted to give her her airtime, you see. Right. Julian says he think you should try to make your videos a bit longer. He feels sometimes it's too short to appreciate your uh, Micropolis modules. Yeah, I guess that's a that's a, a fair comment. Although sometimes I'm like, you well, know, I don't know really what I would, what else I would do. Yeah. I've said all that I think I need to say about it. And, Maybe just some more quiet turnarounds of it before uh, ending the video. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, because there's not that much more. I, yeah, I, yeah, I know you don't have your city layouts just laid out uh, uh, permanently, but a thing I would, would have enjoyed would be uh, an end segment of the module being put into the Micropolis city. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a possibility too. It's like it goes here. Uh, workshop teacher says I mainly make the videos because my son and I think it's great fun doing together and share with the community. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's a good reason to do. Uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, awesome. I was going to say thought process, but it's not thought process. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 a great way to do it. Start started as a uh, yeah as a uh, activity to do together. Yeah. Ooh, this says, Ooh, yeah. Unusual dish with a hole in the stud. All right. Yeah. More usually um, solid, aren't they? Right. Yeah. That's to be able to attach it there, right? Mm. That's cool. <laughs> I understand that Kaz feel the same way. I have a good job that pays to build, and YouTube is a nice hobby. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, YouTube is basically at least uh, yeah for me. It's like an extension of the Lego hobby. Yeah. Uh, also, plan to make tutorials for terrain for Warhammer, and hopefully sell some terrain later. Ooh, that sounds good. Mm. Uh, is that Lego yeah. Warhammer? Uh, this is from the Woodshop Teachers, uh, oh. which I don't think have a Lego channel. He's uh, doing a lot of other things, I think. I haven't really... Oh, no, the Woodshop uh, Teacher has a city. Oh, yeah, do you do? Wow. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> I haven't actually it. seen your uh, channel. Ah. Uh, but he's going to make terrains for Warhammer, he says. Okay. Interesting way to branch out. Yeah. Is that going to be in wood or is that going to be in Lego? <laughs> uh, it's never into war. I, mean, I played it some with uh, friends like ten years, ten years back in school, uh, but never got into it. Uh, Seemed like fun, but it seemed like a lot of work as well because you uh, you often needed to paint your uh, figures. Yeah, so that's like role play with with um, figurines, isn't it? Sort of. No, it's more like uh, well, it's uh, war strategy. So you command armies yeah. and fight yeah. fights. Right. Hmm. Yeah, tabletop game Warhammer from Games Workshop. Yeah. Julian Brick City says YouTube is too much work, so it steals time from actually building a city. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's why I've never seen your city, Julian. Oh, sorry, I've seen. Uh, I mean, 
so I'm going to get slaughtered for this, but Julian's Brick City and Hamburg City Bricks, I believe, are both Germans, which is fine, obviously. But I can't remember which one of them has the Ninjago City roller, uh, the Ninjago roller coaster mock going on. Whether it's Julian's Brick City or Hamburg City Bricks. <laughs> He'll uh, probably uh, answer uh, very soon. Yes, probably, with lots of expletives. Why don't you know what I'm doing? Um, yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, it's very impressive, the roller coaster. I haven't seen it because it doesn't exist, it says. <laughs> it's huge. Very good, then I, I haven't missed anything. Uh, good shop teacher has been playing and building ter uh, terrain for the last 20 years. Oh, okay. That's, that's uh, awesome. Have you ever thought about building the terrain or making a version of Warhammer in Lego? That'd be fun. Interests collide. You can, uh, yeah, you can play Warhammer with Lego. It, it stopped having to measure things. You can just count Lego tiles and then you need no distances. It would be a lot easier. Mm. And like in, in Warhammer, you sort of have, um, you have like measuring tapes to figure out how far away uh, your armies can move on the on the train and such. Okay, right, yeah. So, so like I'm, I've got a trebuchet that will fire three inches or whatever. Yeah, basically. Very odd. The two sides of this, this side and this side, ostensibly look the same, but they're built quite differently. I actually, they're not the same, are they? This is this is larger. Right. Mm. Yeah, it's built. The other one was one was built with bricks, and the other with plates, basically. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. One of them's got more plates on the side. I don't know why. Dare say we'll find out soon. I have put the fat one on the light, the correct side, so that's good. I gotta turn on uh, a camera again now. Uh, there we go. Oh, that's what a view of Vega. Hey. Well, maybe pull the camera up a little. There. No, she's still just sitting. You can't see her head, but oh well. Well, this is the module that went back to the. Um, Orbiting module, and that's the blast off. You can't see it, black on black. That's the blast off. Uh, oh, that's the proper engine. Yeah. There we go. Not a cross nest this time. No. Exactly. Uh, there's some nice, nice figures in Warhammer, says Lady Brick Skater. She's been eye eyeballing the Age of Sigmar models. I have uh, heard of them. Uh, yeah, I haven't been too much into them lately. Well, at all, ever. Uh, as I said, I only played some like 10 years ago. Mm. Uh, at some point, I was into uh, painting minifigures, or mini, well, not mini, not Lego minifigures, but painting the uh, figures from uh, my board games because I have oh, a yeah. lot of board games. Mm. Uh, but I had a lot, a lot of figures in those board games, so I gave that up. I didn't <laughs> enjoy it that much. <laughs> I'm not a very artistic person, and uh, I couldn't sit there paint, painting stuff. Yeah, it also gets a bit tedious, I would imagine, if you've got to do a massive army, and they've all got to be the same, and then you find you're not getting them yeah. sort of similar. Yeah, that's uh, that's my thought. Of course, there's uh, a lot of people enjoying that, and that's, that's oh, yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, I can but, see. It's, it wasn't for me, unfortunately. I've done all sorts of crafty things in my time. I, I used to build... One twelfth scale um, doll's house models. Oh, really? Um, and I've got one that's um, in the style of Charles Rennie Macintosh, who's one of my favourite architect designers, and various other, you know, periodic th things in history. And it was largely because I just liked those bits of uh, architecture or whatever. Um, and whilst you know, I, I now do the Lego instead. It's a sort of similar thing in that you're you're making a whole little world um, of of you know 
with lots of intricate detail and all the rest of it, you're just using a different medium. Um, but of course, with that kind of thing or the thing I, the sort of thing I was building, once you've built it, that's it. You don't do anything with it apart from it just sits there collecting dust. You can't break it down and start again because it's all MDF and lots of craggle and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and whilst it was it reasonably um, satisfying to, um, I mean, I, I did crazy stuff like make wallpaper on the computer from Rennie Macintosh designs and all sorts of stuff. Um, kept me off the streets for quite a while. <laughs> But, um, you know, once it was done, it was done. And, and I still love it and I wouldn't get rid of it, but it just literally sits in the corner gathering dust because you don't go and open it every, every five minutes. Um, occasionally I do. I mean, it's got lighting and stuff as well. So occasionally I go and have a look in there. But uh, I think at least with Lego, you've got the opportunity to do something different if you get bored with it. Take it apart, start again. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Much more reusable. So we got on. a little introduction to Cass's craft, uh, artistic sides, where she got her from. <laughs> She's been doing. Yes, I am a bit of a crafty person when I need to be. <laughs> I've always been good at art and stuff. I mean, I, they wanted me to do art at O level, but, you know. Like, 16 age 16 exams but i was into the sciences as well so i took all of those and the uh, curriculum was such it wasn't compatible to do both so i just gave up art and thought well also it was i think i think my parents instilled in me that um, artists tend to starve so that's not any kind of career <laughs> which is why i went off and became an engineer <laughs> that's uh that's usually a steady job yeah, yeah. It is if you don't give it up. But mm -hmm. Yes. Hamburg City, uh, Hamburg Brick City is the roller coaster guy. Hamburg, Hamburg City. Yeah. HBC is the roller coaster guy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Woodshop um, Teacher has been using Lego for introducing his boys to Warhammer using knights and dwarves and orcs. Oh, yeah. Mm. That sounds. Uh, that's a nice way of doing it. Uh, you've seen them. Oh yeah, the dwarves and orcs from uh, from the Lord of the Rings sets and such. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Julian was planning on building a city in my basement with a train layout around it, but now it's all filled up with train tracks and no space for a city. <laughs> I don't see that's a problem. Ah oh, yes, I remember some of your early videos, Julian, with with you having your trains running around. Ah. Um, the steampunk mm -hmm. crow's nest. Yeah, I'm a little behind on, on comments there. Just talking about the yes, the engine there. Yeah. Have, have you checked out Nurashima Hex Legomaniac? Yeah, I checked it out as much as I've sent your Millennium Falcon, uh, Julian. <laughs> he keeps mentioning it. It's supposed to be a good game, and I keep forgetting it. I'm not playing much board games lately, and well, it's supposed to be a digital board game. Right. Uh, but yeah, I haven't been playing a lot of board games lately, so I keep forgetting it, unfortunately. A digital just, board game? How does that work? It's just, it's a board game in digital format. Uh, just on your phone or something? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, like, a, it's an app, basically. Oh. oh, yeah. What am I saying? I play Carcassonne like that all the time. A little behind, says Julie. <laughs> oh, it's not digital. What am I even uh, on about then? I th Oh, it was digital. It's not digital, says Julian. Um, then I'm mixing up some stuff, but yeah, Nurishima Hex is a then just a normal board game. Then, ah, great. Ah, okay. Was yeah, there a okay. digital version of it then? No, uh, never mind. Uh, but they did a digital version. Okay, okay, so uh, that's what I remember then. Uh, Oh, we've got some doors coming in now. Ooh, nice. It would be nice if I put the window frame in the right way around. Is there any compartments for all the moon rocks they brought back? I don't know. I'll have to see if I can use some of those nice uh, geode pieces from um, right. 
you know, the um, the new space sets, they would look cool, wouldn't they? Yeah. So, Excuse me. Lots of sounds. <laughs> my phone going off. Yes, there we are. That's that's the escape hatch them to get out. Oh, nice. Oh, the classic doors, those that are usually on, uh, I've seen it often on like fire engines. Yes, yes, indeed. Open up uh, hatches to um, hoses and uh, all the equipment. Yep. GJ is calling you, says Julian. Sorry? GJ Bricks is calling you. Oh, no, no, it was an alarm, not a phone, but yeah. <laughs> Rich Shop Teachers is also great fun playing the Lego game Heroica. Hmm. Oh, yes, I've seen them. Um, I've seen someone did a mock of, of that, uh, of the Heroica thing, and that looked really interesting, actually. Oh. Well, I think it's one of the Beyond the Brick um, type videos at a, at a show. I haven't seen, uh, seen that game. No, the, the alarm on my phone um, was my 45 minutes until midnight alarm. Um, ah. So 11.15. Um, now, the reason I have that is since the beginning of 2008, I've been doing a daily photograph, taking a daily photograph. All right, and yeah. Sometimes I find that I haven't done a photograph today. And that's my, you've got 45 minutes to get it done alarm <laughs> before it's too late. Right. And so far, I've managed it. So this is year 12, I think, consecutively. Right. I'm taking a photo every single day. Yeah, that is impressive. I just started taking a, a Lego photo every day as well. Yep, I have my minifig. Um, either this. The, the, the this torso or sometimes other torsos if I get bored with that. Uh, yeah. Um I'm unfortunately I'm woefully behind with processing and um posting to my personal blog, but I am mm -hmm. still taking every day, so so it'll be a huge chunk at some point soon and my uh, Twitter will just go absolutely bananas. Well I don't know if I'll bother with the Twitter but I, I do need to get it up on Flickr at some point because that's the that's the place it's been keeping all of them since 2008. So. Oh, okay. Please close the door when leaving the lander. <laughs> exactly. But then I've got, I, you know, this thing called Lego kind of got in the way and started taking my life over. So this is why I've not been doing so much housekeeping in the way of the photography. <laughs> got some boosters. Trimming boosters. Oh, nice. Well, we're getting there, folks. There's not a lot left. It might actually be within the uh, the estimate. I hope so, mm. yeah. Uh, Julian says, hmm, I was tired. Now, not so much. Maybe I start building something. Yeah, that's the, um, that's the sleep, sleep deprived hump. Uh, or uh, I, I call you. You sort of have to get over, over the uh, the non-sleep uh, or sleep mm. sleep deprivation hump to to continue throughout the entire night. Yes. Uh, it lasts. It's like a two to three hours. You're really tired, and then suddenly uh, the body is like, "Well, I guess he wasn't going to bed anyway. Let's just uh, pump some adrenaline into him and then." Uh, See what see what happens. Yeah, I've been like that on night shift sometimes. Yeah, it's it's getting to my my slump, not my hump. I think because <laughs> I was looking at the instructions and I thought I've lost that bit. Where is it? I can't find it. Where the hell is I have it? it in your hand. I'm looking everywhere and I'm realizing it's not just in my hand, but it's upside down, which is why I can't reconcile <laughs> it with the picture. So, oh dear. <laughs> Julian says I could start building the Super Starter Story. Yeah, that's a phenomenal set. That would take you five minutes, Julian. Get on with it. Yeah, and Julian <laughs> usually says he spends no time at all building sets. So that's... It's a really nice way of um, joining them together, actually, as well. We've got these connectors here. 
go into the yellow clips. Ooh. There we go. There we are. Ah, nice. Mm. Very uh, seamless. Yep. The super starter story only takes seven hours. That's it. Yeah. So chop chop. Yeah, and intriguing yeah. actually. That whole side panel is effectively built upside down. Oh. Ah, that's why they're clipping it into in like that. Yeah. Because it doesn't fit in with the rest. It also doesn't sit level now, but that's fine. <laughs> Ooh, another fact: the oh, reaction yeah. control system (RCS), the things on the side. Uh, provide thrust to a spacecraft, allowing it to be steered in the right direction. This system was used by the Apollo lunar lander when descending to the moon. Right, last push, folks. I had to put Julian's Brick City in timeout because he said he was going to build some construct stuff. <gasps> yes, rightly so. Well done. <laughs> None of that filth here. <laughs> How do I remove him from, uh, sorry. How do you remove him from timeout? Oh, it's just a uh, timeout. It's just default 300 seconds. Uh, he'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> oh, you're sorry, I don't think you can, can you? <laughs> uh, no, I just, I just clicked to put in timeout. <laughs> sorry, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be sitting there ranting away to himself. <laughs> Sorry, should I not have made him a mod? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm using my powers. I can see why people want to be mods now. <laughs> oh yeah, all of his messages have suddenly gone as well. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen. I was just thinking you couldn't post anymore for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just everything deleted. Will they come back when he's out of timeout? <laughs> I don't know. And off the event, poor Julian. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> well, now I know what happens when I put people in timeout. That's great. <laughs> yes, that, that is great. Thank you for thinking about that in advance. Do we have a, do we have a place where uh, we can set the time for, for timeouts? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's a default from Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo. I think it's a yeah. default with uh, YouTube. After five minutes, he'll be able to join the chat again. Yeah, I was just wondering if his messages would come back. <laughs> Oopsie. Because now they might be deleted forever from the, the stream recording. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, Oops. Yeah. And to be honest, I haven't... It seems to be rather hit and miss as to whether I actually see uh, the the live chat comments when I'm watching people's live streams, if I'm not watching it live. So if I'm watching the replay, All right. I sometimes I can't seem to get the chat to come up. So I'm, if people don't actually repeat a question when they're answering it and they just answer the question, I'm like, well, what, what was that all about then? <laughs> no idea. Maybe it's just the crappy version of the app I've got. I don't know. No previous messages will not come back, says Lady Big Sketcher. Oh, well. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, I've missed a bit. No. Oh, that didn't look quite right. I'm, I'm sitting here wondering why my window left. Yeah, that's oh, no. Because there should be two in here, not just ah. one. A bit more of an airlock going on. Yeah. Instead of just opening out to the vacuum of space. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no, there's only one set of doors, but so yes, it still opens up just into the vacuum of space, but it does fit together a little bit better. That's the only point. Good. Right. So, uh, how did that go on again? Oh. Come on, fit. We are. Right. So no big chunks left is good. Oh really only a few pieces left now. Hurrah. That's cool. That's great. Um let's make sure I've got to where I'm getting to. It reminds me of an Aussie brick chick accidentally timed out butt shop on her seventy two hour stream. <laughs> yes. That went down well with everybody apart from butt shop, didn't it? <laughs> 
Oh, but shocks. Accidentally. Yes, obviously. Definitely an accident. Accidents happen, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should be back by now, Julian, shouldn't you? Five minutes is up. I think maybe soon. Yeah. Needs to go in there first because otherwise it gets pushed too far in and you can't believe it. Dun, dun, dun. More stickers, the last two stickers going on. Nice. I saw a small, um, I saw a short video from a channel called Smarter Every Day, mm -hmm. uh, where he had visited the, um... oh, Julian is back. Hello. Yay. Uh, thanks for joining us, Julian. Where were you? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't push it too far. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so you you were saying. Yeah, so uh, he. Uh, oh, I have to greet some solo brick builders here. Hello, welcome. Hello, solo brick builder. Nice to meet you. Uh, we're almost done, if I'm honest. There's not a yeah, lot. Yeah, we have a few minutes left, and then uh, this uh, stream is uh, done. As Cass is soon finished her uh, her lunar lander, I read all his messages, so no problem. Yeah, I try to read the messages and not just answer usually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I saw saw the video by Smarter Every Day where he visited the uh, the science well research facility where they keep all the moon rocks from all the Apollo missions. Yeah. Where they do uh, scientific experiments on them and all that stuff. Yeah, and it was incredibly. It was very incredible to see how they, uh, uh, how they treat them and how they, uh, how they store them and everything. They're basically mm -hmm. stored under pressure in nitrogen, and they're never taking out into uh, open air. Yeah, uh, and you have to double bag everything, and they, they, uh, it's like a super ultra clean room type deal. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, every, everything sterilized uh, and, and such. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, and then uh, uh, some information about how they actually collected moon rocks because they didn't just go around collect moon rocks and then uh, like just pick up rocks and sh toss them in a bin. No, uh, it wasn't at all, was it? Basically, for everything they collected, they. Uh, uh they wrote up descriptions and uh, and uh photographed them and uh and uh yeah from all angles and showed which directions they were laying in wow and everything this is important to know if a rock was laying towards north or south or east to know how how yeah. how it's been exposed to uh, the sun and such yeah One booster <laughs> in the wrong way, and that's it. Julius Brick City says, I think I have to build the 6198 to not get blocked again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no mentioning of that other stuff here, you see. So, folks, there we go. Oh, there. The ascent module is done. The ascent module is done. Now, let's see if we can put it on top. Let's see if we can descend it onto the uh, descent module. Oh, I better get the door in the right place with a ladder, haven't I? <laughs> Be nice to have a ladder when they come out. Ta -da. Can you get it all in view? I'm hoping so. Yeah. That's awesome. Solar brick builder really want the set. Yeah, very understandable. It's an amazing set. What are mm. your plans for it? Uh, Kaz? What are your plans with the set? Well, I'll put it on display somewhere, I think. So this is right. this is Buzz. And then... Neil is already adding footprints. 
Neil has just arrived to put the flag up. There we go. Nice. Flags come off. Terrible. And then, of course, some vitally important visitors are also there. <laughs> I got a space cat. Yeah, how's that? Brilliant. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. Let's move this a little bit. Um, thank you very much, Lego Lomaniac, for looking after everybody in the chat. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. Really fun build. I really enjoyed it and uh, enjoyed chatting with everybody. And I really hope uh, you had fun too. Yeah, great. And thanks so much for allowing me to be part of this. That was very fun. Yeah. And, I hope uh, you all, uh, everyone else had fun as well, and we'll uh, yeah. be back at some yeah. point. Well, thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll end it there, so to speak. Cheers. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye, everyone.